Hello and welcome to Fletzes and Waxels, a figure skating podcast to satisfy all of your skating news, analysis, and recap needs. I'm Mary Margaret Mertzos. And I'm Alicia Mertzos, and we're sisters with a lifelong love for figure skating, practicing, watching, and discussing. And we have another special guest, two episodes in a row. Yep. We originally thought of doing this in the same week. It was way too much work. Yep. But a lot of people ask us about Ice Dance. We know a lot about Ice Dance, but sometimes I feel like I don't really know... What other people don't know. Exactly. People who don't know about Ice Dance. So we have invited a skating internet person to join us here. If you haven't figured it out by now... (laughs) We've been dropping hints all over yeah. the place. For literally weeks. You know him from Patrick Commentates Figure Skating on YouTube and that guy who screams at all the American competitions. You're welcome. welcome. Patrick. Thanks. <laughs> Hi. I love being introed as we brought in someone who knows literally nothing about ice dance <laughs> because I feel like it's appropriate. I feel like we all like to pretend that we know things, but really I'm like, that looked nice, whatever. <laughs> I feel like we hear the same thing from you and from a lot of our listeners, which is, I've been to 700 competitions in my life, and I have no idea what's going on in Ice Dance. Well, and that's the thing for us. I literally, you know, was doing the Dutch Waltz testing Ice Dance at six years old. And so it's sometimes hard for me to really know what other people don't know. Yeah, like, I don't know what the Dutch Waltz is, so there you go. (laughs) Mary did it at six. I did it at eight. Mm -hmm. Like... It's the the baby dance, basically. Baby's first ice dancing program. Yeah, it's the first pattern that you learn, generally. I guess you could learn, like, the canasta first or the baby blues, but usually it's the Dutch waltz, which is literally just push, 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 swing roll, push, 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 swing roll. That's the entire (laughs) dance. But, yeah, we've been doing it all of our lives. so And we've been watching it literally all of our lives. Yeah, that too. So having somebody to interject when we're trying to explain ice dance things and say, wait, I do not understand what you're talking about, I, I hope will be a useful thing. Yes. Well, we all know I have no problem interjecting and being <laughs> loud, so I'm glad that I can play that role here. <laughs> so yes, please. Uh, before we get started, though... Um, for people who might not be familiar with you, how did you get into the rabbit hole of figure skating? Oh, that's a great question. And I feel like how I explain this changes every time someone asks me because <laughs> it's also vague. So I grew up uh, in the U.S. in the 90s. So therefore, mm-hmm. figure skating was just around all the time. I feel very privileged to have grown up in the era of Michelle Kwan. Um, and I feel like, like a lot of U.S. skating fans, I feel like ladies skating was like my gateway into mm-hmm. everything else. And then uh, men's came along and then really didn't start paying attention to ice dance or pairs until like maybe 2011, 2012. <laughs> so like I just was like, whatever, it's fine. Um, <laughs> so much newer to those, uh, though I have, you know, gone back and learned some of my history. But uh, yeah, and just, you know, watch a lot of skating, scream about skating on the internet <laughs> and in person. Um, and do you have any personal skating experience? Or no, do you avoid no. The ice at all I have been <laughs> skating, I think, maybe three times in my entire life. So that's well, it. That's, so it's all just like... Than nothing, you know. It's all just like having watched over the years and picked up things and understanding things over time. So um, I'm not an expert. I don't claim to be an expert and especially not on things like ice dance, which is just a continuous mystery to me. Yeah, I I definitely get it. It's it's a bit hard to get into, especially if you've never skated a lot yeah. of it. Um, to me, I watch it and think, okay, what would it feel like to do those turns? Which if you've never done, you know, a Choctaw, it... I can't imagine, like, if you've at least done a three turn and a Mohawk, mm-hmm. you can figure out what's going on in Ice Dance. I've if done you've neither never of done those. The... <laughs> if you've done, done neither of those turns, it's a lot more challenging to understand, for example, the difference between a three turn and a rocker. Or yeah. a three turn and a counter, which they all look basically the same. Well, and especially once you get to, you know, the high level of competitors you see at Worlds, if they're not making it look easy, something is going horribly wrong. Yes. And, you know, speaking as somebody who has skated and, you know, done all of those difficult turns, when you're first learning them, they are, it's so much harder to do, say, a Choctaw than a Mohawk. Basically, they're similar turns but the Choctaw is the more difficult one of stepping from one foot to the other yeah a mohawk is basically any time you step from forwards to backwards or backwards to forwards changing feet great a Choctaw makes 
that super simple thing Difficult. really stupidly hard. I think the most exciting thing about all this is I'm going to reveal to the world how truly little I actually do know, (laughs) which to be fair is not much. So (laughs) at the same time, though, the one thing that honestly for us, you know, was an impetus to start this podcast was that nobody talks about ice dance. And it really makes me sad because it's it's something that I love. I mean, when I was skating, that was for me what I wanted to do. I didn't care about jumping. Spinning was okay. I wanted to do ice dance. That yeah. was what I wanted to do the whole time. And, when I, you know. I feel like these days as a U.S. skating fan, like ice dance should be the thing that everyone cares about because <laughs> it's the thing that we are the best at by far. I mean, we have yeah. Nathan, which is great. Although, to be fair, we have two thirds of the men's podium uh, mm-hmm. this year at Worlds. Um, but like ladies is struggling Hit or miss. and Paris yeah. has basically never been good so uh if you are really trying to get into it I feel like ice dance is a great way because like as a casual fan seeing the U and being from the U.S. seeing the U.S. teams do really well is really fun and there's such great depth mm-hmm. and like just watching that those last two flights at like U.S. Nationals for example mm-hmm. is really just impressive um but it's hard when it's really hard to understand and you don't really know what's going on yeah and part of that also comes down to who they hire for the commentary team. Yes. yes. So yes. something that we see a lot is Canadians have a slightly better understanding of ice dance because you watch skating on the CBC, which is a whole other thing we're not going to talk about today. <laughs> I saw yeah, that tweet. Not getting into that. Um, yeah. But one of their commentators is Carol Lane, who is an extremely high level ice dance coach. So she's able to explain why one team is slightly better at, say, a pattern than somebody else which is something that you can't really do if you don't know why stance. Exactly. And even before that, we had Tracy Wilson. Yeah. And at least now it's really good to see people like Tanith White and yes. Bill, yeah. um, Ben Augusto doing commentary in the U.S. I think that uh, Tanith and Ben especially, I've found, are really good at the commentary side yes. of things. I don't know how much you listen to I Stance commentary as opposed to just without. I mean, I try to avoid commentary as much as possible, although I Stance yeah. is uh, the one thing I will try to listen more. And Tanith <laughs> especially is just like so helpful. Um, Charlie, also the few times he's done it, has been really mm-hmm. great yeah. to listen to. Um and then Ben, all three of them are really great. It's like when we get Tara Lipinski and Johnny Weir that I'm like, what's the point? Yeah. They don't understand either. Like, <laughs> or if they do, they're really bad at explaining it to everyone. So, well, no. and that's the thing about Ice Dance is someone like Kurt Browning on the CBC stream. He is very often like, I don't know, it looks pretty. Yeah. Well, and that is the hard thing as well, is if you're watching singles, say, it's very easy to say, okay, this person popped a few jumps or they had a few falls and this person didn't. So it's very clear to say who was better. Or this person was trying quads and this person wasn't. So that's why this person did better. That's not how ice dance works. Yeah. Ice dance, it's very rare to see mistakes. And so if nobody's... Except for 2006. (laughs) Well, yeah. But if nobody's making mistakes, then how does the lay person determine who was better at skating clean? And so it becomes... um, Sorry, it becomes a matter of who did I like most. Yeah. Yep. And I'm sure we'll get into that when we talk about PCS things. Yes. But <laughs> ice dance is the most subjective discipline for yeah. sure. Um, but yeah, why don't we start talking uh, specifically about the requirements that have changed for this year. The other thing that I find really quite fun about ice dance is just that it literally changes every, every year. And it means that you get something different we had all tangos last year and this year we're going broadway musical oh, and opera god we're done with the tango romantica <laughs> that was rough i am interested to see so if we start with the required rhythms for the rhythm dance next year both juniors and seniors are doing musicals and operettas the juniors are doing the tea time foxtrot and the seniors are doing the fin step and the fin step is a really really fun dance it is funny, though, we were going back and watching uh, some previous yeah. spin steps. Uh, it was the required pattern for the 2013-2014 Olympic season. And it's funny watching back going, oh, those there were a lot of people not quite hitting those key points yeah. back, back in the Olympics <laughs> and around there. And that's something that we're probably going to see in both the juniors and the seniors this season. Because the fin step has only been competed a couple of times. Mm -hmm. It is one of the newest uh, pattern dances. Not quite as new as the junior one, which we'll get to. Yeah, and the tea time foxtrot is brand new. Yeah. So 
they're going to be figuring it out a little bit on the fly. So what you're telling season. me is all the Tango Romantica struggles we had because no one could do their key points <laughs> aren't necessarily going away next season because these no. are newer patterns. <laughs> Yeah, my guess would be no, um, Great. just because it was funny, even going back and watching, um, we when we post this, we'll link some videos yeah. for people. Um, since the purge of YouTube videos has struck a lot of things down, I was watching, for example, Davis and White at U.S. National. That's what I was watching, too. Yeah. Yeah. And there's it was a key point at the time, um, but where they do the cross behind, cross in front and Meryl does a twizzle and going, OK, you're kind of falling over yeah. there. That's, I don't know that I'd give you that key point there, Meryl. <laughs> like. I love you, but I don't know if I would give you that key point. And I thought the same thing watching Tessa and Scott's at the Olympics. Mm -hmm. Um, Things like Tessa's very first twizzle in the fin step. There are a lot of twizzles in this pattern. Yeah. Um, And those I I can identify. (laughs) Yes. I should note, though, for anybody, especially beginners, watching the pattern sections, um, we'll post the pattern for you. But basically, if you want to understand levels basically all you need to care about are two tiny little sections of the dance the rest of it kind of doesn't matter and if you can identify those two sections so there are four key points the man and the ladies in the one where it's the cross behind behind cross in front twizzle yeah and the Choctaw going into the slide um we can delve a little bit more into that if that's confusing but it's only those two small sections that really you need to care about if you want to know who's in the level great fortunately for newer fans especially they don't have different key points for the man and the lady this season which they sometimes do where you know the lady will do three steps and then the next three steps are the man's key point Mm -hmm. which is kind of infuriating because you can't keep track of who had which steps for the key point. Mm -hmm. They're the exact same this season. Obviously the two skaters are doing different steps, but it's the same numbers in the pattern. Mm -hmm. And so for those key points, you know, if you're basically what you want to do, if you want to understand, okay, what level is a team going to get? You want to zoom in on the feet. Yes. And honestly, for all of ice dance, you want to be looking at the feet. The teams will try and distract you with their upper bodies and their (laughs) arms, but don't let them do it. You want to watch the feet. That's where the important stuff is happening. As far as the upper body, there's only one thing that matters, and that is how close relatively are the shoulders and the hips yep are they both nice and close together in whatever dance hold they're in and do they look comfortable yes if they're looking uncomfortable then that can you know hit a goe but in terms of things like level yeah it's all about the feet has she got the claw yes the claw That's... hands it, it was if a she's... thing our dance coach yeah. used to always say like you need to put your hand just nice and gently upon the man's shoulder and if you're hanging on with your claws then you're not doing it right (laughs) you're giving giving it away that basically means i'm hanging on for dear life i hope Mm. i don't fall over or get lost by my partner yeah but yeah when you're watching the feet in those key points you just sort of want to check okay are they on a clear edge so either they're Mm -hmm. going you know forwards on the inside part of the foot that's an inside edge or you know clearly on the outside of the boot if you're at a straight, that's never really a good thing. There are literally two times you should be in a straight line in ice dance. And that's the slip steps in the Paso Doble and the slip steps in the Silver Samba. Yep. Which Great. So never uh, this season. <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, and the funny thing is to, um, for things, little things that don't seem like a big thing, but which I'm sure we will see impacting the level. In that first key point, there's a cross behind and a cross in front. And for those who listened to us talking about the juniors last season, um, there was the issue as well in the Argentine tango where the technical panel isn't looking for you to step behind your other foot. You have to cross behind. So it's not right behind it's crossed over. This is where I'm going to bring in my, I know absolutely nothing sort of thing. So I've heard you guys talk about this a lot because I do listen. Um, And I don't understand what the difference between like a cross behind and a step behind is. Can you explain that to me? Okay. So the main difference is the placement of the lower leg. Okay. So you want to look from the knee down. Yeah. Is their calf directly behind one another in a parallel line? Okay. Or is it actually crossed over? Got it. Like think about a cross cut. You want that shape 
of the lower leg. Okay, got it. Yeah. And so when we say step behind, we mean like directly they're parallel. If you're looking at it straight on, you don't see the two legs. Okay, Whereas so the with difference the cross, to break sorry, to break down and sorry to interrupt. Uh, to break down to Lane's yeah, no term. Um, and I'm visually representing this, not that anyone other than the three of us <laughs> can see that. Uh, but step behind would be like your like they're directly parallel to each other and cross behind yep. would be like it's gone further and they're not parallel, right? Yeah, exactly. Yes. Got it. Except the opposite of what you just did. Because this is bad. <clears throat> Oppos- oh, I was Meaning just they're like, running on I parallel was- <laughs> lines versus make sure that the legs are actually crossed. And I definitely bumped the mic while I did that. I'm yes, sorry, I listeners. Great content for everyone who's not watching our hands. Which is <laughs> but the three of us. I was just more just moving to yes, show yeah. things moving away and not actual representation of yeah. legs crossing. But yes, I now yes. understand. So basically, like a cross cut, except backwards. So instead of crossing over the front of the foot, you're crossing in behind the back of the foot. Got it. Yeah. And for things like, so for that first key point, it's cross behind and the same thing with the cross in front. It's not a step in front, it's a cross in front. And it's, they're not really changing their step. It's literally cross behind and then pick up the foot and put it back down. Got it. And then Maybe. right after that, <laughs> the lady does the twizzle. And that's one of those, again, if you watch Davis and White at U.S. Nationals, you can see Meryl it's, stumble a little bit. It's not the biggest thing. And I, I don't recall with the protocols whether yeah. they gave them that key point or not. I'm but sure they me, did. It was U.S. Nationals <laughs> in the Olympic year. I am yeah. almost positive that they got a level four on that well, without even having to look. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the other thing about that was her foot did continue a continuous turn. Yeah. which is the most important part of a twizzle. Because basically a twizzle is three turns attached to each other and so without three stopping. Turn, to be clear, is when you turn on an edge from forward to backwards and make sort of a three shape yep. on the ice. And that's the easiest turn to do, the first turn that yeah. you learn when you're um, starting. The, a way to visualize this, listeners at home, if you draw two circles that are touching like a figure eight, a... Uh, three turns stays on that same circle. Whatever circle it's on, it's like drawing literal threes going around that circle. Yeah, and just the shape of a three on the ice. That, That's where the name comes we're from. We're not inventive in <laughs> figure skating. We call them three turns because they look like threes. So basically a twizzle is a consecutive number of those without the telltale stop in between each half rotation that you would normally do if you're doing continuous three turns. Got does it. that make okay, sense? Yes. <laughs> to, to me, it does. But I knew what a three turn okay. was. And okay. I can already <laughs> identify twizzles because those are like one of the things in ice dance that are the easiest to learn yeah. um, to yeah. identify at least. Um, so it makes yeah, sense Yeah. So if me. you're watching a twizzle at home, you might go, oh, why did they only get a level one on that? Why did he only get a level one on that? Chances are he stopped the rotation at some point and then that twizzle does not count. Yeah, because as soon as you stop the rotation, even if it's just a momentary little second, that's considered, okay, you've ended the twizzle and started again, basically. Yeah. And it is those little things that it comes down to in ice dance levels. Which is why it's so important to understand what is considered a twizzle. Because mm-hmm. it might, to a person who doesn't know what they're looking for, look like he did it perfectly fine. But there was a teeny tiny little stall in the middle. Mm-hmm. And so it's dead. And so for the fin step... As long as the rotation keeps going for the full one and a half, chances are you're going to get the level even if... Yeah, even if it's not the prettiest Even if thing, it's not good. That's when you get into GOE yeah. area. Makes sense. Um, and, then, and then the other key point that they both do together, um, if you've ever watched the fin step, our favorite part of the dance, which they're so, sadly not including yeah. as part of their requirements, is when... The two of them slide into a stop and then they do a little toe pick dance. It's where so fun. I'm on their so picks. mad they're getting rid of it. It's like the best part. Yeah. Now, the one thing about that to keep in mind so that we don't get too disheartened by that is some teams will continue to do a dance at a stop at that point because they are allowed to. Yeah, that's the thing. Because the key point requires you to slide into a stop and teams are specifically allowed up to five seconds of being stationary there. So I really hope that teams will come up with their very own unique toe pick dance. Oh my God, I just want everyone to have a new toe pick dance. That would be so fun. 
that is really what I hope will happen. And I think that's what they're sort of encouraging by yeah, allowing that. That seems to be what the ISU is basically asking for without requiring it is please come up with your own little topic <laughs> dance or something to yeah. put here before moving into your pattern dance step. Yeah. And before we move on to that pattern dance, um, we'll just mention a little bit. So the big main important uh, part of the third and fourth key points is they do a Choctaw. And for those who watched in the Olympic season, the rumba, the big key point there were the double Choctaws where it's, yes. you're going the big wide step. Yep, yeah, exactly. And then you move from forwards to backwards and then again. Yeah. Although in the fin step, it's just forwards to backwards, yes. but it's that big curving angle to backwards on a sort of so, curving angle going the opposite direction. So if we talk about those, seriously, if you're listening to this, draw two circles that are touching mm -hmm. because I'm going to use this to explain almost everything. everything. Yeah. <laughs> so, a, so a mohawk is a step from forwards to backwards or backwards to forwards that stays on one circle. So you keep going around the circle from forwards to backwards or vice versa. Got a it. Choctaw is the exact same turn, except you change circles. Okay. So you're if you're going in this direction for the first step, if you're going clockwise, you'll then change your on a on a figure eight basically. Yep. To so make that opposite edge. Counterclockwise around the figure eight, and then you step backwards and go the opposite direction. So you're you're going clockwise going, on a second circle. Yep. This Got is it. really hard to explain without a diagram. <laughs> no, I Seriously, like the, guys, the draw it. The circles is actually like a very nice way to visualize it. And I will say as someone who knows nothing, like you're doing a great job. Ex at least. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> good. At least to me. So, you know. Because that's how we're taught to do them physically. Exactly. A lot of times your coach will have you do it on like the blue line. Or and... they literally draw with the marker yeah. on the ice. Here's your figure eight and this, and now go on this and then step onto the other edge. Or they and that's break out learn. the circle thing for figures. Yep. That's the other thing that they do. If they've still got one, they sometimes break those out to teach you how to do like chalk toss. And figures, kids, were <laughs> gotten rid of in the early 90s. Oh my god, I can't believe I... you have to explain what figures are. <laughs> oh, Just I in case. So old. I, I know. Because we still did figures, even though they were discontinued by the mm -hmm. time we reached that point in our skating. We happened to skate at a club that was like, now let's keep doing figures. Those mm -hmm. are good for you. Um, basically they're set patterns, a little like a pattern dance, but they're on a literal figure eight, like we're describing. Yep. And you do, it's all about the edges and yep. all about getting those correct turns. And I, it is something that I miss and something that I wish more skaters would do. I, it's Figures really great and compulsories. Practice. Yeah. They're good for you. We all hate them, but they're good for you. <laughs> well, you say we all, that was my favorite thing <laughs> that... <laughs> I was that nerd yes. when I was a kid. But. And I mean, to be fair, so was I. But we're very much the statistical outliers yes. on that. Most people hate figures and compulsories, but they're good for you and they can be fun. Yeah. So that is basically all you need to know about the fin step. Yeah. As Great. long as, you know, they don't fall over or have an interruption in the rest of the pattern, it kind of doesn't matter for the level. Yeah, th as long as they keep moving and it looks generally the same as everybody else's, the rest of it is fine. Yeah. And they are only going up to that stop, so it's only half of what we did in the past. Yeah. And then after that stop, it's a separate element where it's a, I think they call it pattern dance style step sequence. Yeah, that sounds right. The, yep. Yep. Pattern dance type step sequence. That's what it was. The PST. Yep. And so basically what they're doing with that is it's almost like you're making up your own pattern dance where the skaters can do kind of whatever they like as long as it continues on In that the, same pattern with that same uh, style of music and yeah. style of skating. Mm -hmm. And tempo, um, right? Like that. It has to stay the yes. same. Yes. Yeah. See, yeah. So I did my continue. homework. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to continue with the same piece of music more than likely. Yeah. And they'll go and they'll do something that resembles, say, the Tea Time Foxtrot, mm -hmm. which was the, uh, was Kalashchuk and Spadiriev's pattern dance step the last time we did this. Yeah, so basically, um, and the interesting thing, um, this sort of goes into one of the questions we had, but just to mention sort of the history of these pattern dances, they don't come out of nowhere. Yeah. The fin step um, was, uh, I can never pronounce the names, but Rockmo and Coco, I believe is how you I pronounce it. So. A Finnish dance team who yeah. did a quick step for their original dance in, I think, 94. 
something like yeah. that. Yeah. So most of the patterns came from the original dance, which yeah. back in the day, but before the 2010 well, Olympics. I was about to say, not that long no, ago. I was going to say, that was enough. only like two Olympics ago for <laughs> yeah. having an original dance. Yeah. So we used to do three programs in ice dance rather than two. So we would do the compulsory dance. So Which say is the pattern. For this year, it would be the fin step. Everybody goes out and does just the fin step. And then they have an original dance where you would get a theme, like say Broadway, and everybody does a basically a pattern that they're inventing mm-hmm. in one general direction to that theme. Yeah, with the other elements as well. Yes. Although 6.0 ice dance is a very different beast. We're not going to talk about 6.0 yeah. ice dance. It's completely different. It's yeah. not the same sport at this point. <laughs> um, but that was how all of these patterns were created. Well, most well, of them. Most of them. Some of them are really, really super old from like the 1800s yeah. or, you know, our our club the, as adults yeah, not the as one ad- we grew up yes skating at the one in toronto that we skate at is actually the home of the canasta tango yep. which is the second pattern we ever learned yep and i think that's from like 1928 or something yeah. was when it was invented in toronto and so some of these patterns have been around a long long time a lot of them have been around for over 100 years at this point and so people learn them now as kids and they go out and they do them or as adults, they'll learn them. And then you might go out to what we call a social ice dance event, which is if you ever think about what old people used to do <laughs> when they go out ballroom dancing, which is let's go meet my friends and just dance ballroom dances. That's what we do on ice. Basically, yeah. It's fun. And we I do highly recommend. Literally just compulsory patterns. Everybody goes out and do, that does That does sound fun together. if you know how to do any of those things. Um, <laughs> it, well, that is the thing. And minor details. that is something... That is something that I am a little sad about. We've talked about compulsories, and I know that you, Patrick, at at some points have expressed, why do we need compulsories? And I really do feel that they're a way to basically make people go outside their boxes. To say, you know, you are a more serious team who does really well with like a waltz or something too bad you're gonna get those salsa hips on and we're gonna make you do a silver samba a silver samba and a quick step Mm -hmm. and for the people who are really lighthearted, well guess what now you've got to do a tango yeah oh no and i for sure i think my frustration that i have expressed just to be clear about Mm -hmm. the like the tango romantica this season in particular is that (laughs) it's not from a like i understand why it's important to put all of the teams on a like equal or not necessarily equal but like easily compared playing field right so like everyone Mm -hmm. has to do the same thing we're going to compare you on this one thing and that's going to help sort of can determine where your placements are going to be totally makes sense i think the only frustration i've expressed has been as a fan who has to watch it over and over Mm -hmm. like yeah especially okay at skate america last season (laughs) they put the rhythm dance like in the evening after a full day and there was it was just so hard to watch that many tango (laughs) romanticas and it was the first grand prix so like no one was doing it particularly well at that point Uh, so it's just i think from a fan perspective and i understand and like the, this is, I think, why the um, compulsory and the original dance probably got fused is the ice and like why we got rid of That's figures. That's exactly why. Like if you go back way back, like no one wants to watch figures. You can't really put it on yeah. TV. I don't. I don't necessarily think that that's the best for the sport, but it's the best from like a people watching the sport perspective, which is where yeah. a lot of these decisions get made. Um, so I think just the patterns, like, the fun thing is, like, by the end of Skate America, I could for sure tell you what the Tango Romantica <laughs> looked like, and I knew it, because yeah. I saw it over and over. Uh, but the hard thing is, like, having to watch, like, same style, uh, mm-hmm. people not do it particularly well, just, like, all in a row, yeah. becomes really difficult. Like, I, did I even watch the Rhythm Dance at World? No, I didn't watch the Rhythm Dance at Worlds <laughs> this year. I was just like, um, I don't, it, I can't, yeah. I don't care. It's too many It tangos. did improve by that point, and I will not be surprised if at the beginning of the season we see people having a tough time with the yeah. fan step. But. but the lovely thing about all of the rhythms except for basically tango is there's a lot more wiggle room everywhere else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The reason we all complain about the Pasadoble and the tangos is because they all have to be the same. As opposed to something like a quick step, 
for example, this year you can do quick step Charleston or swing for mm -hmm. your rhythm. So there is a lot more wiggle room for the way that you execute it. And you so know they what? can I, look a little different. I will go on record saying that to date, the Yankee polka has been my favorite required <laughs> pattern. It is I, ridiculous yeah. and silly and like, it's just so <laughs> I, dumb I think is the word that I'm looking for it's just so it's very silly cheesy. Yeah. it's really fun and I was like I can do this more easily like 12 programs in a row than I can do like everyone being mm -hmm. serious tango 12 programs in a row but um... I feel the same way about the cha-cha mm -hmm. which is a stupidly hard pattern and it was very mean to give that to the juniors but at least when they do it badly it's still fun yeah yeah and at least with the fin step I mean, you would have to try really, really hard to do a dour downbeat thin yep. step. It is almost impossible. So at the very least, we're going to see a whole lot of upbeat rhythm dances, which yes. on the other hand might mean more downbeat free dances, but that's a... A it's whole other issue. problem. We already have a whole bunch of those anyway, <laughs> well, so that's yeah. not going to change that much <laughs> at this point. Yeah, I don't think at this point it matters much what the rhythm dance is. A lot of people like to do... More serious, more serious yeah. free dances. And part of that is sometimes that's what the judges like. And yeah. I've yep. never understood why the judges seem to only like well, serious. Well, that old thing about, you know, a comedy never wins the Oscars. Yeah. It's, it's hard to do comedy, but it's not a, nearly as appreciated as serious drama. And yeah. that holds true in ice dance as much as filmmaking. Yeah. So that is the very basic stuff about the fin step. Um, the... Before we move on, I do want to um, talk about what the juniors are going to be doing. Yes. And again, I know a lot of people don't watch juniors and especially not junior ice dance. I get it. I totally get it. I'm but definitely we talk not about the one juniors. of those people. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to talk about the juniors, so you might as well know what we're talking about. I, I, for one, am really, really excited because a couple seasons ago... Um, I'm trying to remember now what it year. Was, it was 2014, 2015, Yeah, it was I the post-Olympic season. Yeah, where they had a waltz short, short dance, and the ISU was specifically trying to develop new patterns. And one of those new patterns is what the juniors are going to be skating. It was Kalischek and Spadiriev's pattern dance element. It's a slow foxtrot. Yes. And it's a really interesting new pattern, which literally has never been competed other than by those two people prior yeah. to this season. So it's going to be fascinating. I, there might be some difficulty with it. I, I feel a little bad that they're giving it to the juniors, although I yeah. understand why. They kind of couldn't do it to the seniors because Kalischek and Spadiriev are still competing. Yeah. And so were Gillis and Poirier, who did the other pattern dance yeah. step that was chosen to become an official pattern. So they kind of couldn't give either one to the seniors. Mm -hmm. So uh, Kalischek and Spadiriev and their coach have been going around giving seminars, teaching junior mm -hmm. ice dancers how to do the tea time foxtrot. And it is a really nice, It it's less sort of fast paced, obviously. It's a slow yeah. fox, but it's, you know, just a, a very happy, you know, it's program. still light yeah and fun but it's not 800 miles a minute which mm -hmm. is perfect for the juniors yeah and all of the we'll we'll post these as well i think we don't need to go too deep yeah. into you know the key points because there are a lot more for the juniors but just recently actually somebody posted one of those seminars where they were teaching in depth like it's an over an hour long seminar about the key points for the tea time foxtrot and we will link to it Yes. When we post this episode so that if, if you feel so inclined, you can go check it out. And then later on in the season, when you're confused about what we're talking about, about junior key points, mm -hmm. you can go and watch that video that explains Me. it far better than we I'll could. I'll be doing yeah. that at some point, I'm sure. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's a longer pattern than a mm -hmm. lot of the other patterns that we see. So it's going to take up a huge chunk of the junior rhythm dance. Yep. Um, but it is a really fantastic pattern and... As challenging as it's going to be, I'm very excited to see how the juniors handle it. Yep. I think it'll be fun. Can I ask who writes mm -hmm. the descriptions for these pattern dances? Because <laughs> they are I was I did my homework, I read through all the documents, <laughs> and I got to these descriptions of both the FinSet, but especially the Tea Time Foxtrot. Mm -hmm. And um if you haven't read ISU Communication twenty two forty one, I highly recommend it. Um, but my favorite is the end where it says this dance should be performed easily, smoothly, and effortlessly as if the dancers were having a relaxing tea time break during a long day of work. Like who, yeah. 
who comes up with this because it's amazing. My personal favorite from that while we're having this conversation is uh, the rise and fall action should be present up and uh, present in up and down knee actions as well as the continuity of the steps so that if there is a full cup of tea on the head of the, a dancing lady, no drops would be spilled. I have that highlighted and I just wrote next to it in my notes. I just put iconic. It's like, who's coming yeah. up with this description? It's amazing. It's, it's kind of a weird thing to me. Like, to me, these descriptions for me personally, are kind of no use at all. Mm -hmm. I read through them and I go, yeah, I don't get it. Let me watch somebody doing it. Just for me personally, because when we learned ice dancing, we were shown it. Yeah. You know, nobody wrote it down and told us these are the steps you do. Your coach goes out and says, okay, you do a three turn and demonstrates and then this and okay, follow along. And that's how you learn them. And then eventually when you need to relearn them for social ice dance events, mm -hmm. you get paper patterns, yep. which are a whole beast unto themselves mm -hmm. they basically draw the pattern for you and have weird abbreviations yep. for everything and so you have to literally with your nose in the piece of paper skate around the rink trying to figure out what everything means yeah so it's like the diagrams at the end of these communications that make absolutely no sense exactly. that's what they are Perfect. honestly to me those are more helpful yep but really it's sort of like if you think of um you know when people will try and write down you know ballet yes. moves it's it's only useful if you're able to have the visual accompaniment yes and they need to write them down because they need to make it accessible to people, especially, you know, in the days before YouTube and things like that. That was kind of the only way to learn them. And also to be very clear about specifically what edges you need to be yeah. on in the minutia, particularly in the quick steps yeah. in the middle of the pattern. Yeah, but honestly, if you're one of those people who reads those ice dance descriptions and go, I have no idea what's going on, don't worry. You, even it's for not us, you. No, it is not you. Here's they're... the thing. Go read them anyway because they're real fun. <laughs> they're like so they dumb are. and silly. They're really fun. Yeah. And when you get to the chart at the back of the document, briefly look at it, identify which steps are the key point, and then close it. Yeah. It's uh, the better way to learn to understand pattern dances is to watch them. Yeah. Ideally as well, if you're a skater, to do them yourself, but yeah. at the very least just to watch them and maybe try and identify, okay, that's the Choctaw we need to pay attention to there. But yeah, the, the written descriptions, I for most people, especially lay people, I would even say you probably don't need to bother no. reading it. It's good if you are like really diehard trying to get into ice dance. Yeah. Good idea to go for it and see what you can figure out from mm -hmm. it, but it's going to be much more helpful to watch somebody do it 700 times. For yeah, sure. exactly. Here's the thing, though. Every time I watch the Tea Time Fox shot next season, I'm going to be like, can I see a cup of tea being balanced on the top of her head? <laughs> and I'm going to be like, she turned her head, so no. So clearly something's wrong. <laughs> Even she though tilted her head to look at him. Oh, yep. the tea spill. <laughs> yep. Even though that's not going to tell you anything about the actual technical aspects of the dance, I'm going to be like, yeah. therefore, it must be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, it should, by way of their description, her tilting her head should decrease the GOE value because it should be performed <laughs> so that a cup of tea would not be spilled if it were sitting on top of her head. I, I rather doubt anybody <laughs> no. is going to go that deep in unless they want to be really mean. But <laughs> Unless I, they're us and want to be the mean judges. Yeah, the mean judge I, is fun. <laughs> it I, is. I love being the mean judge sometimes. Um, but yeah, so those are the biggest changes in terms of the rhythm dance, mm -hmm. other than obviously the music side of things. Um, Which we talked about last week with Rob. Yes. If you missed it, oh go listen God, to go it. Listen. It was a great it was episode. So fun. I like. I like to think of myself... <laughs> as the anti-Rob in that I know nothing <laughs> and I'm here to defend the choice of using Celine Dion in your music. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're Canadian, so we have a bias in favor of using Celine, I guess. I don't know. I'm, I understand people's problems with Celine, yeah. but at the same time, I can't help but have a soft spot for her and go, oh, exactly. she's, just, she's just so, I don't know. She's trying her best. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> She's so Canadian, really. <laughs> she is delightful. And also, I feel like as a gay man, I'm required to love Celine Dion. But 
Like, go so I think there might be some biases here. But maybe, that's okay. maybe just a few. But yeah, no, that episode <laughs> with Rob was really great. I, as someone who has like a little bit of a music background, and that was one of the reasons that I started getting into figure skating is that I was like hmm. really into classical music, and so like they were using, and those are all the things that I hate now, right? Like I hate seeing like <laughs> Carmen over and over. Um, but that was a really interesting episode just to hear him talk about all of those like technical <laughs> things that like I don't even think about uh, as a fan. And I'm someone who likes to complain about music a lot. So <laughs> I feel like yep, it both validated some it. of the things I like to complain about and then also made me think twice about some of the things I like to complain mm-hmm. about. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that is the basics of the Tea Time Foxtrot and the Fin Step. Um, another important thing to note In case you missed it, this is the first season that we're actually requiring a theme in the Rhythm or Short Dance. Um, Usually it's just you have to use music that fits the requirements of the pattern and something appropriate to go with it Yep, and go for whatever you want. Yeah, this this idea of saying it has to be from a musical or operetta is kind of a new thing. And if you've been listening to us for a while, you'll know that we were saying, oh, there's not going to be a pattern because the ISU yeah. did not specify a pattern as of last year's communication. And it was sort of a last minute thing, I suspect, after some complaints from people like us that they weren't going to be including yeah. a pattern. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how it turns out. We'll have to wait and yeah, see. Yeah, I have no idea. Based on the quality of the last fin steps, I'm a little bit worried <laughs> about these fin steps. But they're doing the easier half of the pattern. Yes. So it should be okay, I hope. I'm yeah. more concerned that everyone's just going to choose like the same three musicals over and over. Because if there's I mean, anything that's powerful, it's the figure skating hive mind. Well, yeah. I mean, so far, we We've haven't had some seen... diversity. Yeah, not that many people have announced yet. I am I just hope that we don't see too many people doing the yeah. exact same thing. Yep. I'm sure we'll have a few. Yeah, uh, we'll always. have some repeats. Fair enough. You're quite limited at this point, mm-hmm. honestly. But yeah, may, make different choices. <laughs> also, the most important rule change that I took out of this communication was that ladies can wear pants in the rhythm yes. dance which yes a yes. it's ridiculous that that's not just not allowed in general but um mm-hmm. i'm very excited that it was there for hip-hop a couple seasons ago and yep. it is back for for yeah. musicals Honestly, for some reason as long as yeah. it's like appropriate with the theming of the music <laughs> which like the, reading well, through these documents is hilarious because the isu doesn't <laughs> say anything that means anything it's all just like vague nonsense yeah. Yeah. Well, the ice dance is very much the most conservative of all the yes. disciplines. Yes. And it it is very much time that they just say pants for ladies whenever they like. It's the 21st century. Yeah. Right. And, but, and, you know, saying for this, you know, they did it just, you know, two seasons ago or whatever. And then they're doing it this season as well. Like, there were no disasters. People enjoyed pants. It was fine. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> Everything have, will be fine. We have skaters like Marie Jade Lorio who's like, let me put on the tiniest skirt I can over, over my jumpsuit. Pants. Yes. Yep. <laughs> the one thing I was a tiny bit disappointed about was um, mainly for the juniors, more so than for the seniors, but there's a really great piece of music from the musical Brigadoon, which would work yes. really well for the Teen Time Frock Strut. And I had a thought of, are we going to get a man in a kilt program? Except they very specifically said that men must, must wear, wear trousers. Pants. So also, dashing my hopes on that one. I love that the theme for this year is musicals and or operettas, but your <laughs> costumes cannot be thre- theatrical or garish in design. So, And I'm like, what does that even yeah. mean? Also, you're literally so, doing musicals. <laughs> so that is on literally every costume yes. requirement. Right, I know, but it's in, ridiculous. In the ISU... And even at, like, the lower level at Skate mm-hmm. Canada, um, I was reading one of the documents for a level that I was competing at personally as an adult, and it said, no theatrical or garish costumes. And I went, I don't think I've ever seen a costume that wasn't theatrical or garish. Yeah, yeah I'm like, this what means a, how nothing. are you defining this? What does this actually mean? Because... <laughs> There are lots of costumes I can think of from the last four <laughs> years that would count as theatrical or garish, but they all were fine, so it's just silly. Yeah. It means nothing. Yep. Um, actually, while we're on the topic of costumes, we did get a costume question. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me find it in Wasn't our that the one about pants? I'm pretty yes. sure. <laughs> oh, it was about the difference between pants and 
oh, like you, jumpsuits unitards. Yeah. or unitards. There isn't a difference. The, the ISU considers them the same thing. Yeah. And for women, um, that's the reason why Marie Jade Lorio last season in the free dance could have like a jumpsuit unitard with a skirt over top. The important part for the ice dance big wigs is that you know it's supposed to be based on ballroom and so you're supposed to have a skirt yes uh, which is why she was able to do that but really in terms of whether it's a sort of a onesie or just pants it doesn't really make any difference and that question was from old, at old castle on twitter mm -hmm. thank you for your question um yeah the isu has been very particular and has becoming is becoming less particular about yeah. the skirt thing i remember tessa virtue's carmen skirt initially mm -hmm. They had her change it after um, high performance camp because there was a gap in the skirt yep. and it oh had to God. be connected. Yeah, that the skirt has to go all the way around. Yeah. Even if it doesn't fully cover the crotch, as long as there's a bit of a skirt going around it. Counts. The entire way. It's it, so ridiculous. It has to go the whole way. It's so yeah. dumb and arbitrary. And the reason I remember that is because it was featured in that dumb reality show about oh, Tessa yeah. and Scott. By dumb, they you mentioned mean the it best. In that Thing that ever has been made about figure skating on television. I mean, yes, we loved that show. That show was the best, but it was also terrible. Yeah. But terrible um, in the best ways. Also, nothing will yeah, be yeah. more iconic than Marina, like in her sunglasses and with her like tiny little dog just like driving around. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> it was quite the show. We need to revisit yeah, it when we need days. to revisit that. Um, yeah. So. I stance and costumes it's a weird thing as long as you you know have the important bits covered basically and as long as you don't wear pants when they specifically say the woman can't wear pants you're basically fine yeah just yeah you can get a like you're supposed to have half of your upper body covered yeah and it's not supposed to imply nudity which yeah. we know they don't enforce no. yeah <laughs> like they've never enforced that people wear nude colored dresses all the time yeah it yeah, it means nothing. I stance costume rules mean nothing except for when the referee is mad at you. Basically, yeah, it's it's not a problem until somebody decides to make it a problem. Great, basically. I love subjectivity. There's never any issues <laughs> with that at all. Well, welcome to ice dance. Yes, that's that's kind of where we are. Welcome to figure um, skating, really. Well, yeah. yeah. Um, and so for the rhythm dance, obviously those patterns are the most important change. Other stuff isn't changing too much. You've still got a lift and a step sequence. The interesting thing for this season that I, I have to say I am a fan of is that they're changing the requirements so that teams have to do two different types of twizzle sections in the yes. rhythm dance and in the free dance. So time to get very <laughs> specific and detailed about the way that twizzles are going to work this season. So... Up until this past season, you've basically not been allowed to do any sort of significant steps in between mm -hmm. your twizzles. It was and basically twizzle, change foot, twizzle, change foot. Yeah, and then this season they expanded it so that you can have more steps in between the twizzles. And if you you know, were watching this season, you can definitely see a lot of teams yeah. are taking advantage of Think that. Think Piper Gillis and Paul Poirier in the free dance. Mm -hmm. yep. That is the perfect way of taking that rule and saying okay how far can we stretch this to mm -hmm. let to let us have steps between our twizzles so now you're going to have to do the old kind in one program and the new kind in the other program yeah and also so basically in the rhythm dance you have very limited steps in between the twizzles so the old style of just you do a twizzle on your left foot and then you step onto the right and you do the twizzle the opposite direction and, and then you maybe don't even put your foot down and yeah. do the other direction of twizzle on that same foot. Yeah, so that's what you're going to see in the rhythm dance. And then in the free dance, there's a bit more freedom to have the steps in between the twizzles, sort of the way we've been seeing a lot more of this season. Yeah. So something important to keep in mind for the rhythm dance is that a step is not necessarily what you would think of as a step. <laughs> Any weight change is considered a step, which is where we get into danger territory. Mm -hmm. Because if you are on two feet and you shift your weight from your left to your right and back again, that is two steps. Yep. That's bonkers. Okay. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to be very particular, especially if you're on two feet, about where your weight is. Because well, or even the other thing that's going to 
potentially cause some issues. As you'll see, not a lot of teams, but some of them will do uh, a set of twizzles on one foot and then just do a change of edge and staying on that same foot, go into twizzles in the other direction. So you can change edge once, yeah. but you can't change edge again because that would be considered two steps in between the twizzles. Yes. Okay. And you would have to change edge three times... Like, you have to change edge an odd number of times to mm -hmm. do them in the opposite direction. And you're yeah. only allowed two steps between two of your twizzles. So basically, I think in the rhythm dance, we are not going to see those sets of, no. you know, twizzles just on one foot. Like, uh, the biggest ones to me, I always think of, of are Kalischek and Spideria. They yeah. do it a lot. Where you'll see them, they'll do one set of twizzles, and usually it's three. They do change of edge, push, 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 and back into the other yeah. direction of twizzles on that same foot. So we will probably not see any of those because the only way that you could do it is if you basically did a three turn. Yeah. After your change of edge. That would be the only way that you could do it. It would because, be really hard. Because that would be two different twizzles. Basically, you can't repeat the same twizzle. Mm -hmm. So a twizzle on an outside edge forwards and then a twizzle on an outside edge backwards is fine on mm -hmm. the same foot. But you can't do forwards and forwards both on an outside edge on the same foot. Yeah. Got it. I think. <laughs> Twizzles are more complicated than they seem. I picked up on the, like, because I read through the rules, I picked up on mm -hmm. the difference between, like, what they were requiring in the rhythm dance versus the free dance. And then I was sort of like, they're different. Great. Um, and then sort of <laughs> left it at that. So thank you for explaining it in more detail. Yeah. I mean, I think basically... I. Other than saying we probably won't see people just doing two sets of twizzles on one foot with no change of foot. Basically, if you think back to like the twizzles that everybody was doing in like 2014, 2015, yeah. that's what you're going to see. The last time we did the fin step. Exactly. That's what you're going to see in the rhythm dance. And they cannot do that in the free yes. dance. They have to have steps in between. And so we're going to see twizzles more in the style of what some teams have been doing, where there's more of a gap in between each set of twizzles in the free dance. Yes, yeah, so you're required to have at least two steps between two of your twizzles. Yep. Can I ask, so from mm -hmm. the layman's perspective, also known as my perspective, um, <laughs> it seems like the requirements for the rhythm dance are harder because for the free dance, you like get a chance to sort of like reset with your steps in between. Is that right? Or am I reading that totally wrong? It's... Yes, but <laughs> um, the thing about Twizzles is that was how they've done them basically their entire lives. Right. Yeah. Because if you think about basically the allowance to have multiple steps in between your twizzles only came in in the last season. Right. So even though it's slightly easier, all of these teams have been trained doing it the other way where you can basically only have one or two but steps in between. some of them are bad at it the other way. Well, so it feels yes. like this is helpful for the teams who are like aren't good who maybe are known for not having the greatest twizzles in general. Maybe the free dance ones are easier. Or am I just wrong? Well, the other thing about the rhythm dance style of twizzles is you can actually cheat a little bit and use your momentum from mm -hmm. the first twizzle to make your second twizzle easier. Mm. Yeah, because if you sort of stop and have steps in between, especially since I you are required to touch your partner yeah. in the middle and having that touching with your partner does slow down your momentum. So you're right. sort of stopping the momentum from the first twizzle before you go into the second and having that momentum going in just makes it easier to do. And they're also not going to build up the speed the same way that they do yeah. going into the first twizzle. Like a lot of times you'll see them just like book it down the ice and then hit that first twizzle really quickly. Yep. But they're required to do interesting steps in between the twizzles and so they're not going to have that same momentum mm -hmm. so and more than the steps for me is the fact that in the free dance they are required to yes. touch in between and that it doesn't necessarily have to slow down your momentum but if you're doing something other than just you know quick hand grab and then we go back into the twizzles which you could technically you do, could but high five yeah. if you want to <laughs> okay putting a challenge out there to anyone listening <laughs> Please high five in between your twizzles in your free dance and I will stand you forever. <laughs> I mean, that would be fun because the other thing that's important to consider, and if you watch the ice dance uh, judges coaches meeting, meeting, yeah, the coaches meeting, sorry, um, where they talked about all these things and people had questions about, so what's an interesting, innovative 
um, mm -hmm. transition. So if you just reached out and, you know, held somebody's hand, that, that wouldn't be interesting. But I'd say a high five is interesting. Particularly so maybe we could get if you like that. do a crisscross as you're high fiving and yeah. switch spots and then do your next twizzle. Like, I think that'd be fun. I think we That's just came up with something innovative. that someone needs to use right now. And <laughs> I'm going to be really disappointed if no one does it. <laughs> Yeah, that, that is the other thing as well, is that, especially for GOE, um, less so for level, although there are some exceptions, but it, it is a GOE point to be, you know, innovative and connected with the music yeah. and things like that. Basically, is what you're doing interesting or mm -hmm. is it a thing I've seen a hundred thousand times? Yeah. yeah. Is a GOE point. Yeah. Which means that uh, hopefully, you know, basically all of these rules are intended to bring some excitement and bring things that are new and To diversify different. a little yeah. bit. We How don't well want to see everything, yeah. everybody doing the same difficult entry into their lifts. Exactly. Um, so that's the rhythm dance. Um, yes. That's the requirements there. The free dance, as we mentioned, the twizzles have, have changed. Yeah, have changed. Most of the free dance, though, is basically the same yeah. as last season. Yeah, the free dance generally doesn't change too much year to year unless they try something that super doesn't work, like that time they tried to allow props. No, that was the original oh, dance. Oh, right, it was the original but dance. But they yeah. allowed props in the original <laughs> yes, dance? Yes, they did. When <laughs> was this? Season. And when, what do I need to go watch? Please tell I'm, me. I think it's 2008, 2009. Yeah, it was pre-Olympics. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to um, go watch some things after we're done because that sounds I know amazing. There, was, there were some wild ones. I, I, do, I will say one that I really did like was Weaver and Poge had one where it was a flamenco. And the thing was the props had to be attached to your costume. And so she had pockets in her dress with fans in them. <gasps> yeah. And so they were doing things with fans in the middle of the program. It's, I love I think it. it's one of those that is a really cool idea but would take – you know, time and experience to make it a thing. And it yep. didn't fully work out the first it season, which is why, didn't work. which right. is why they canned it. But yeah. if they had kept it, it might've turned into something cool eventually. Yeah. I mean, you look at, um, Gilles and Poirier, we went to stars on ice last the mm -hmm. other night. Uh, Gilles and Poirier did a number with a cane at stars on ice. Mm. That was super interesting. And I just was sitting there thinking, this is why we let props into the original yep. dance that one time, except it super didn't work. But this is why we let them in, because this is so cool. But they and are keeping something that did work, which was really exciting, which is they're keeping like letting the character step be a thing that you can do. Yes. Which yes. honestly was my, I think my favorite, all of my favorite ice dance programs from, or most of them from last season had like really cool, unique character steps and they were usually the yes. fun programs um <laughs> but yeah I... it's like such a cool fun thing where it's like we're just gonna like like we're gonna be karina manta and joe johnson we're just gonna vogue down <laughs> the ice towards the judges and it's amazing um yeah, but i'm glad i that think that staying. was yeah, I think that was definitely my favorite new requirement from last yeah. season and they are keeping it so they will teams will still be required to do a character step and then they can choose two other choreographic yeah. um, elements. The jun For the juniors, it's optional, but we did see a number of them do it Do last it. Time. If you're yeah. a junior, do it. It's so fun. Yep. <laughs> yeah, so they'll have the choice to do that and also the choreographic sliding movement is one of the other ones they have the option to choose. Right. Yeah, so it's uh, the character step, the choreographic sliding movement, the choreographic twizzling movement, choreographic lift, and choreographic spinning movement. Yes. Um, those are the ones you get to choose from. Yeah. And the other thing with those is just you can kind of do whatever Anything. you want with them. There are some requirements, but not a whole lot of them. So you yeah. can go a little wild and be creative, and that is their purpose. Yes. And actually, while we're talking about those, we got a question about grades of execution related to this. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, okay. So question from Isabel, Y-S-A-B-E-L-L, -L, I think. Isabel Piglet on Twitter. Uh, can you explain how GOE points are calculated? In a single, a plus five gives you an extra 50%, but I've seen Isance Tech where the base is around one point and the GOE is around three points. I couldn't find an explanation with quick Google. So that, that is the weird thing of the choreographic element. Yes. Um, where basically it, it's like a character, or sorry, a character step, still a nice yes. sense, but it's like a choreographic sequence in singles or pairs where 
there's no level you just get the points for doing it and then you get GOE and basically to encourage that creativity you can get a whole lot of GOE and I stance on those creative elements you get the numeric value of the average of your GOE points yep. as opposed to the bonus percentage yeah and yeah GOE in ice dance this season is done a little differently I don't want to delve into much yeah. we've talked about before that the point difference between levels is not as much as it used to be and that impacts the way that grades of execution impact your overall placement regardless yeah. of level um, but the weird thing that you're noticing about grades of execution is entirely for the choreographic elements yeah that yeah you get if you get a plus five you get five points yep that's that's what happens and it makes kind of no sense well other than in to again just to encourage creativity yes. in that's... terms of the greater scheme of scoring you go wait where did that grade of execution yeah. giant bump come from i don't understand that's what that is mm -hmm. um yeah so that is i think everything that's a big change for this season i believe so um we did have somebody asking us about step sequences. I guess we may as well go into yeah. that a little bit. Um, oh, actually, sorry. There was one more big change that I'm really excited about. The one foot step sequence in the free dance. Yes. Um, so like last year, they will be required to do a regular step sequence plus a one foot step sequence. Um, which is where you'll see, you know, it, in the last season, the teams would be doing basically the same terms on one foot, not allowed to put a foot yep. down. What I really like for this season is that they have to start with the same turn so that the judging and technical panel can see where it starts, but then you can do whatever you like. No holds bars. Oh, nice. They don't have to be the same. I think this is gonna really make it more interesting. Yeah, and hopefully mean that people actually get their levels on this. Yes. Because you all know that there's one partner that's really good at like rockers and counters and the other partner is not. And so you're kind of stuck. Yeah. And so the levels are assessed separately. So the lady gets one level and the man gets one level. And now since they can do kind of whatever yeah. they want, they can play to their strengths and hopefully also be a bit more Creative. interesting. Because the thing for me about the one foot step, I personally really like it because it's a really good Indicator example. of skating skills. Exactly. Yeah. And also just forcing teams to go out of their comfort zone like no you will do all these turns on one foot and if you put your foot down that's a big no-no <laughs> i'm all for yeah you know make guys dance harder <laughs> exactly mandatory difficulty yeah um and this i think will help balance that make mandating difficulty while also allowing for creativity yeah and that it really seems to be the direction that the ice dance committee is trying to go in mm -hmm. is Let's make things super hard, but also force creativity on these teams. Yep. Force them to be creative and they'll figure it out. Yeah. And this is sort of related to somebody asked us about how we, you know, sort of assess skating skills yeah. between different teams. Mm -hmm. For me, the one foot step is one of the easiest ways because yes. you, you kind of can't hide anything in a one foot step sequence. Uh, yes. That question was via skating fan XOXO on Twitter. Um, yeah, skating skills in ice dance, here's a secret, they all have good skating skills. Exactly. If you're in ice dance, you have good skating skills, like, there's no getting around that. Either that or you just don't make it to a world level, yeah, for example. Yeah, you might see somebody with not great skating skills on, like, the Junior Grand Prix, mm -hmm. but they probably won't even be at Junior Worlds. Yeah, it's... And it is hard to differentiate, you know, who has the best skating skills out of, like, the top ten at world say and that it is really hard to judge between but yeah. for something like skating skills you want to look at how comfortable are they on the edge does it look like it's work when yeah. they're you know turning one direction to another um how many turns are in the program outside of their step sequence yeah that's a good indicator mm -hmm. um because if they're doing rockers and choctaws in their transitions guess what they have really good skating skills well and that as well um for ice dance 
it's it's not exactly a part of skating skills but if the team is in hold like skating really close together yeah. a lot of the time and still doing those difficult terms that as well as an indicator of good skating skills because the closer you are to another person the harder it is to do those turns successfully yeah it's really hard to be perfectly in sync so that you avoid clashing blades or kicking each other yeah. or literally running into each other as you're doing these turns in hold so yeah spending time in hold adding in difficult turns and transitions um if you you can just look at how small the circles are small mm -hmm. circles are actually a very good thing in ice dance mm -hmm. again we're going back to my diagram that i hope you all still have <laughs> of your two circles are they giant circles because if they're giant circles they're shallow edges and if you have been watching skating for more than five minutes, you know that shallow edges are a bad thing. So if the circles are nice and small, that means deep edges. And if they're able to do that, not only when they're just stroking around the ice, but also when they're doing turns, that's a good sign of high quality skating skills. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as beautiful as a, you know, nice, long, you know, flowing edge is, it's a little easier to do that than, you know, changing quickly from one yeah. edge to another on a really small circle sometimes it doesn't quite look as nice but it is harder to do yes and so it's that balance of things that look really nice mm -hmm. and things that are actually really difficult yeah um i think that's all the requirements yeah. for this year so i know i think we've been talking a bit much there patrick do you have any questions, questions or things no. we haven't addressed oh my gosh i've been learning so much <laughs> Um, <laughs> well, let me go back to my notes because I did do again like I said I did all my homework I read through all the technical documents <laughs> I have things highlighted and I have like random mostly snarky if you know anything about me which is not surprising <laughs> notes um, so the oh going back to the musical requirements for a second I thought mm -hmm. and maybe not a question but more just like something that's interesting is um, like the music has to be like an essential part to tell the story is what they're saying. So and they give examples <laughs> yep. of like, you can't use um, movie soundtracks like Mr. and Mrs. Smith, A Star is Born, which is really interesting because you could argue that the music mm -hmm. is kind of important to telling the story of A Star is Born. Anyway, mm -hmm, it's kind yeah. of like the whole basis of the movie. Um, but it doesn't say anything about TV shows. And so I'm mm -hmm. okay. my two questions yeah. here are... One, who's going to give me a crazy ex-girlfriend program? <laughs> and We're two, on board with that. Two, if you use a Glee cover of anything, you are dead to me forever. So please don't. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we're on board with both those. <laughs> that was on my please do not touch list for next year that we didn't actually get to in our episode with Rob. Shrek the Musical and Glee were the top two things mm -hmm. on the please do not um, Does anything yeah, from so, Shrek work for either of the patterns, or did you not even bother checking? I'm just I curious. didn't even check. Okay, I'm didn't gonna go check. check. No, now I'm curious. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, in terms of TV shows, that is an interesting gray area, which they did not address. They did not address it because in the Ice Dance coaches meeting, they had a conversation about anything from a Broadway show, a movie, or um, an operetta guess what is not included in that tv shows but as patrick brought up there's the tv show crazy ex-girlfriend there's also something like nbc's best worst musical <laughs> drama smash yes. my favorite <laughs> so you'll Someone notice do a smash program <laughs> oh i would love you'll notice both crazy ex-girlfriend and smash are featured in our playlists from last week i did notice that we don't actually we don't actually know if you can use those the one thing that I would argue, at the very least, for those two examples, is that they both did have mm -hmm. um, stage concert, productions. Yeah, stage productions on Broadway for very limited amounts of time, but yep. they did do them. Crazy so, Ex Girlfriend was on stage at Radio City for one night. <laughs> And Smash, it counts. well, the Bombshell. Yeah, yeah, and Bombshell did have, I think, like three shows or something. Yeah, in New York at one of the theaters. Yeah. So you can make a case particularly because they told Tim Coletto that he can use, like, Lord of the Dance, mm -hmm. which... That one, to me, I would say no. That's not a no, musical but... or an operetta. My thoughts exactly, but they said specifically to Tim Coletto that as long as it is the method of storytelling, then mm -hmm. yes, it counts. Yeah, so it's That's it's so going to be interesting to see who tries these things. Because in terms of, you know, a vibe, like, 
is anybody going to argue that especially something like Smash yeah. is not a musical? It fits exactly within the requirements and there are pieces of music which would be perfect for it. Let's Be Bad and Smash yes. are the two best examples, one for each. Yeah. Juniors and seniors can both use Bombshell to be like, you call it Bombshell when you list it on your sheet yes. because you have to say what musical it's the from. musical it's from and the rhythm that you're using. Mm-hmm. Who cares on if your it's a fictional sheet. musical? It's still a musical. It's still a musical. Exactly. So you list it as Bombshell. Bombshell was done in concert in New York on a Broadway stage. Mm-hmm. It wasn't technically a Broadway show, but it was on a Broadway stage. Yeah, and this is where you get into the really gray area, which is much as I would love somebody to do either, I do worry and would totally understand if nobody yeah. would because you don't want to put in all that work to create a program and then have the technical fan go, nah, no no right. I don't, yeah, please yeah. check don't first it. please make sure it will actually work yes. before you do it because nothing would be worse than like <laughs> paying for the music editing and the choreography yeah. and learning the program and then to have be told like you can't use this like don't do that to yourself yeah. um but if so you please want careful. to try to get around these rules by using smash or crazy ex-girlfriend i encourage it mm-hmm. those mm-hmm. are both at the very choices. least <laughs> Yes, at the very least, I I just desperately want somebody to do a Crazy Ex-Girlfriend exhibition. Yep. Oh it's God. hard to Please. do in a program, but an exhibition would yeah. be fantastic. Particularly because you can get around some of the more explicit, not ISU-friendly yes. lyrics in an exhibition. Yes. I have... So, um, yeah. I have one of my friends is pushing one of those songs for a certain ice dance team that I'll tell you about when we're not recording. <laughs> Ooh, exciting. <laughs> wait, you could probably put it different... together pretty quickly. Wait, 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 wait. A different team than you and I had the conversation about? <laughs> I can't remember who we talked about now. Maybe, maybe not. It might okay. be the same well, one. We will have this conversation off mic <laughs> about the songs from Crazy Ex-Girlfriend we are trying to get ha- to happen in skating. Yes. yes. Just for audience, if you've never heard of the show called Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, just go watch it. Watch, it. watch it. It's so yes. good. It's four seasons. It's done. It ends with a live concert, which is like the biggest joy ever. And it's like some of the <laughs> that best. That I missed by a day. The music Still is great. Still salty about that. Yeah, it's the music is great. And it's some of like the best portrayal of like mental health on television that I've ever seen. So go watch it. Yes. It's great. Mm-hmm. So, Crazy X Tangent over. Yep. <laughs> we need to Sorry. get back on track with this hands. I knew That's this okay. was going to happen. As soon as I found out that you were into Crazy X Girlfriend, I knew this was going to happen. It's okay. I need to spread the gospel. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah. So, any other questions, Patrick, about Ice Dance before we get into user-submitted questions? Um, I don't think so. I think most of the things I have left we talked about or were just snarky comments that I put in my <laughs> notes, which shouldn't be shared with the world. That's what my Twitter feed is for. Um, maybe I'll just screenshot some of them and post them on Twitter once this comes out so if people want to see what my Excellent. snarky comments were. Um, no, but that was it for me, I think. Okay. This was super Although, helpful. one thing I do... Re- Okay, good. Um, one thing I do remember, um, you asked us before we oh, hit right. record here, and we I wanted decided to, ask to you, wait. Throughout these documents, <laughs> and then I was like, I should stop and wait till we're recording. Thank you for reminding me. Throughout these documents, they reference <laughs> loops like a billion times. Mm-hmm. And they're like, right. you can't do loops, you can do loops, whatever. And I was like, I don't, I only know what a loop is from the sense of the jump. And I was like, this is clearly mm-hmm. not what this means. So if okay. someone wants to explain loops to me, that would be great. <laughs> so there are three main types of loops. One is the one you're thinking of. The jump. The jump. Great. The second is a difficult turn in pairs and singles, but not nice dance. Yep. Which is basically you're drawing a loop on the ice. You're going backwards to backwards instead of backwards to forwards. Okay. Um, Or forwards to forwards. So like, for example, let's say we take, for me, the easiest one. um, Back insides. Yep. A back left inside loop. So you're going on an inside edge backwards and you go around still on an inside edge and then make a full loop until full circle yep so if you're on alicia's diagram of the little figure eight you're going around the circle you go inside the circle and do another little loop and then you continue on in the circle on the same direction got on the same edge yes so that is loop the turn Mm -hmm. and obviously you can do all eight of them forwards backwards inside outside left right you can do all eight of those that is considered a difficult turn in singles and pairs, but not nice dance for some reason. I don't. Well, because they're. Because our standards are lower in... for singles and pairs than they are for ice <laughs> well, dance. Well, yes. 
But here's the thing. I think that they are harder than the closed mohawks that are included for ice dance. Yeah, that's true. I would agree with that. that the loops aren't the hardest, but they are They're harder, harder than closed mohawks. Yeah. We should be letting them do loops if we're letting them do closed mohawks. But anyway, <laughs> conversation for a different day. Um, so that is the second type of loop. The third type of loop is a loop or retrogression, mm -hmm. which is basically when you're on your pattern. So if you imagine that pattern diagram for the fin step, mm -hmm. you're going generally in one direction. Yeah. And just to interject quickly, that is one of the requirements of ice dance is that you proceed generally in one direction around the ice. Yes. Um, there are some exceptions to that, but generally most ice dance things just go in sort circles of around. around the edge exactly. of the ice. So you're generally heading in your direction around the ice. And then you, if you imagine that pattern looping over top of itself. Okay. That's so they're saying like allowed. you can't loop back yeah. on your direction. Like, so you can't just yes. like, got it. Okay. That totally makes sense. But I was like, what does this mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the better way to think of that instead of as a loop, which is what some like ice dance coaches would call it, is to call it a retrogression. Mm -hmm. Got it. Where you're going, going back backwards. over. backwards. Yeah. Which you're, you know, you want to keep proceeding around the ice in one direction. And there are some exceptions, but generally speaking, you don't want to go backwards and then come back again. Yeah. So you can go really deep, like hit the midline and then back to the boards and then back to the midline. But you can't go so far back to the midline that you go backwards. Got it. And like cross a path that you yeah. already went on basically so that is the third type of loop and yeah. that's just that's to make the things super confusing loop, right yes that's the loop that they are not Got allowed it. to do most of the time and i mean technically speaking they can't really do a loop jump either but that's yes. sort of implied. well <laughs> yes i i'm not here sitting here thinking that ice dancers are gonna go crazy and start putting <laughs> jumps in their programs so yeah <laughs> but thank that, you for that, that clarification that is definitely Yes, that is definitely something that I would love the ISU to clarify. I yes. understand that the loop jump and the difficult turn loop, it's kind of hard to rename those, but... Just at, call it a retrogression. Yeah, for the third type, just call it a retrogression to avoid any confusion. Yeah, that would be really nice, but that's probably not ever going to happen. <laughs> um, there are lots of things that would be really nice that the ISU is never well, going to do, so... Yeah. Yeah. So that covers most of Patrick's questions. Let's get into some Twitter questions. Yes, I think we, we we've answered a lot of these. About half. Yep. <laughs> but we'll just work in the order that I've written them down in. If you haven't heard your question yet, I promise it is coming. Uh, first up from at Wesley Foxley on Twitter. Question in two parts. First, how much of an ice dance program is set to counts? All of it or some? We'll answer that first and then we'll get to the second half of the yeah. question. It depends on the team. Yeah. Well, the one exception to that is the pattern dances. Yes. Those are required counts. Every edge has to be a specific specified number of beats and that you can't get around. Every team has to do that section to specific counts. Yes. So if you look at um, the, again, the pattern sheet, you can see where it's written like one plus two. That is the first half of the turn is one beat and the second half of the turn is two beats. That's all prescribed outside of the pattern dance it really kind of depends on the team's preference um for a team like tessa virtue and scott moyer i imagine that lots of it is set to counts because mm -hmm. tessa was a ballet dancer <laughs> so that's just how her brain would function yeah. but for somebody else that might not be the best way for them to learn it yeah it's it sort of depends on how each individual works and how the team works as well. Um, because obviously when you're working with two people, especially if it's a new partnership and yeah. you know, I, I have, you know, for a little while been in an ice dance mm -hmm. team and you know, the, your coach will be on the boards, you know, with the skate guards going and Smacking one the and boards. two and one and two, like very clearly, like, and this is where you do each step just because especially when you're starting, you kind of need that, rhythm yeah. to get in sync with each other and particularly when you're young when the music mm -hmm. might not feel as natural to move to for you by the time they get to senior they'll have figured out what their personal preference is in terms of counts yeah especially if they've been skating together for yeah. forever yeah for like a meryl davis and a charlie white i'm sure they had sections that were choreographed counts and sections that were no we just know what this what this is and how yep. it works um, the second part of that question was also, how do we get that tight synchronization with the music that is so pleasing in ice dance into other disciplines? Trans That's a harder. <laughs> Honestly, I yeah. would be all for that. 
I, I really am a serious advocate for, you know, obviously a lot of, especially kids in the singles disciplines, it's all about the jumps and I totally yeah. understand it. But I do think that ice dance background is a really good basis yeah. just in terms of basic skating skills and paying attention to the music. Understanding how your skating should move with the music. Mm -hmm. And part of the problem with the other disciplines beyond like the basic training from a really young age is you're going to get off your music. Mm -hmm. Some days doing that triple Lutz is going to take longer than it normally does, or you're going to fall or you're going to have a step out and any one of those things take you, takes you off your music. And we all know from watching skating that that is a regular enough occurrence that it just, those elements just makes it that much harder to stay on your music. Yeah. And so there's a variance in how much each skater pays attention to their music and some of them are getting close to that ice dance level of musical interpretation and some of them there could be no music playing and you would never know but it really is a combination of the training and the nature of single skating and pair skating being so unpredictable yeah. you never know what's gonna happen it's not like ice dance yeah that's the thing ice dance in terms of you know the success of your elements it's very predictable yeah it's very unusual for something to go wrong or to have a fall or a stumble and so it's much easier to get in the flow of you know i do this step to this part of the music and then the music changes and i do this part and it's just that much easier to just have the practice of doing it consistently every time yeah. it's much harder to do that in the other disciplines yeah it's yeah it's too hard we're never gonna get it 100 percent. we can well, try it's, by it's teaching just them not to as be important. ice dancers like there's a reason that it yeah. is the same like that way in ice dance is that it's much more important to the important to the discipline as a whole like i mm -hmm. would like to be able to sit here and say that musical interpretation is of the utmost importance in every discipline <laughs> but i've been watching skating for too long to know to think that um those are the skaters I tend to like the most are the ones who are really good at it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's just not as important and there's not as much of an emphasis put on it. And also like the technical things that you're doing don't have to go along with the music like they have to do in mm -hmm. ice dance. Although if you're going to do yep. like big showcasey elements, please time them to the music and don't just do them. Anyway, yeah. step it's... off my soapbox. <laughs> 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 I mean, that is the thing to me. I, I respect so much more the people who can, you know, land all their jumps and be totally on the music at yeah. the same time because it is it is a really hard thing to do. Or like a, yeah, a jump much that's as, like perfectly timed to the music is yeah. so powerful and like works is so effective. Yeah. Like you're landing mm -hmm. like boom right on it and you're like, whoa, that's really awesome. <laughs> and it feels more impressive. And mm -hmm. so there is an advantage in having that musicality but it's not that simple yeah yeah that's the thing i'm sure that that is something at, at the very least the vast majority of skaters strive for but especially if you know you're changing your jump technique or you're having you know a bit of an injured day it it's just so variable in terms of the jumps yeah. that it's it is a really difficult thing to achieve all of it which is why we should respect those who are able to all the more in my opinion yes Definitely. And reward them accordingly. Um, yes. <laughs> yes. That is a thing that I would love for the ISU to do more effectively, but uh, that's a little yeah. bit of wishful thinking. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Next question from Old Castle on Twitter. Uh, could you talk about the types of step sequences, midline, diagonal, circular, etc.? They, did, <laughs> they didn't include the other ones, but that's okay. And what their particular benefits and challenges there are. are other is ones? there a reason? <laughs> <laughs> yes yes there are <laughs> is there a reason a team would choose a diagonal over midline for example okay so first thing we have to do is describe what each type of step sequence looks like yes so there are generally different types of step sequence so for example midline and diagonal are similar obviously midline goes straight down the middle of the ice long ways long ways diagonal goes also long ways one corner to the other corner that's you know pretty obvious and the circular kind of speaks for itself mm -hmm. a giant circle not noble not yep. the whole long ways of the ice circular around basically approximately like the middle hockey circle but mm -hmm. bigger yeah um that whole way around and then you've also got the serpentine step which is right. like sort of creating an s shape in yes. the middle of the ice 
S for serpentine. As, yes. as long as they're, you know, sort of start in one corner and go out to the left and then come around back to the right and then back over, that's a serpentine step. And that is something that the technical panel pays attention to and you do need to have that clear shape when yes. you're doing it. Unlike in singles and pairs where you just do a step sequence and whatever it looks like, whatever. As long as it covers, you know, most of the yeah. ice, that's basically the requirement. In ice dance, you have to very strictly adhere to what is listed on your program sheet. And there are um, some restrictions sometimes. Yes. So for example, in the rhythm dance this upcoming season, it is required to be either midline or diagonal. Yes. So it has to be one of the two. So you can't do a circular step sequence in the rhythm dance this year and they will know and you will not get credit for it mm -hmm. and it will be a giant waste of your time. So that's the first thing to consider is, are you allowed to do any of the step yes. sequences? You might not be, but assuming like in the free dance, you're allowed to do basically whatever you want in terms of type of step sequence. The first thing to consider is the amount of time they take. Exactly, because if you imagine and I'm sure people have all seen like a straight line step sequence down the midline, something like, for example, Virtue and Moyer's step sequence in the Prince program. Yep. It just goes one end to one end and it's over pretty quickly. It does not take that much time as opposed to, for example, a circular step, something like, let's say, Gillis and Poirier's free dance from mm -hmm. this season. It, it takes a while to go all the way in a circular motion around the, the entire ice. circle. Mm -hmm. The longest one is going to be the serpentine step. Yeah. The serpentine step takes forever. And that's why we don't see a ton of it, which is why everybody mm -hmm. forgets about it. Yeah. Because there is usually not time for a full serpentine step sequence because you are kind of expected to basically go boards to boards mm -hmm. every time you go across the ice. Yeah. And so that's one of the considerations. It could either be... I'm really confident in my turns and so I want to take a big chunk of this program doing my step sequence or conversely I'm also really confident that I'll be able to get my turns done really quickly and I have other choreographic stuff that I want to take up the program yeah. with. It sort of depends on the individual program. It's not it's it's really up to the individual choreographer to say what would work best in this program. And a lot of skaters will have a preference. Mm -hmm. um, like some skaters hate doing circular step sequences because you get really dizzy. Mm -hmm. It is much easier to get dizzy doing a circular step sequence because you're turning on yourself while traveling in a giant circle. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also easier to get off track. Yeah. So that one is one that a lot of teams don't like, so they'll avoid those and they'll tend to do a midline or a diagonal if that's the case. Yeah, and the other thing too is to consider, again, just your consistency and confidence in the turns. So for example, if you're doing a big long serpentine step and you're doing lots of difficult steps, if you're less confident in your ability to do all of them successfully, that could potentially lead to you losing a level if you do a whole bunch of, let's say, loops of the turn type. And on one of them, you mess it up and you do an R. So instead yeah. of doing the loop, you do a you little- You draw a cursive R. Yeah, draw a cursive R, which is what happens if you change edge and then go back to the correct edge. That could make you lose a level. And whereas, you know, if you do like a midline step where you're doing fewer difficult turns, but you do them well, you know, there's less chance of you accidentally messing up one of the turns. Yeah. it's. It really comes down to 90% of it being personal preference mm -hmm. of both the skater, their coach, and their choreographer. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's not easy to mm -hmm. just like look at a team and say they're going to do a circular step next season. Yeah. You don't really know. There are a lot of variables. Because it also depends on the style of the program. Some mm -hmm. programs, a midline step sequence just doesn't work. Yeah. It doesn't make sense to just go like flying down the center of the ice doing your step sequence. You want to do something that takes a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And it's a, a lot of it about the choreography and the individual skaters, I guess I would say to that yeah. one. Um, um, and then, yes, we've done a few of these ones. Oh, there we go. Yes. I really love this question. Thank you for this one. <laughs> Skating fan XOXO on Twitter asks, what are your favorite rhythm dance patterns and what do you like about them? Oh, Let's I already start. shared mine. Mine's the Yuki uh -huh. and it's because it's fun. <laughs> yep. Okay, Mary, why don't we make things a little more interesting? And let's start by answering first our favorite ones to skate. 
Well, yes, I was going to separate it into those two because I definitely have ones that I love to skate more that are are less fun to watch. Yeah. For me, the biggest example in that category is the Paso Doble. Yes. I love skating the Paso Doble. It's not quite as exciting to watch, though. No, it's fine, but it's not my favorite one to watch. Because it's also like the world's smallest little pattern. Mm -hmm. And so you're able to fly down the ice, particularly when you get to like those slip steps on the first side. And for those, the Paso Doble was, I think, 2014 Teen required. Was, yes, it was yes. 2014. Was that the short dance the... at Worlds where like seven different teams fell in the short dance? Because there was Worlds <laughs> one year where like a whole bunch of people just wiped out in the short dance. I don't think it was. I don't that think it was one. the Paso Doble okay. that everybody wiped out. I don't know if the they Paso wiped Doble? out on the pattern, but like there was a weird okay. world okay. short dance where like a bunch of people wiped out for no reason. <laughs> um, yeah, the Paso Doble is one of the Spanish style dances. Right. It's got the iconic slip steps where basically your feet are in parallel sliding back and forth like you don't pick them up off the ice you just slide them back and forth and it's a really fun thing to do more than to watch yeah the other one that i think falls into that category is the starlight waltz Mm -hmm. which is that same level that whole level of dances is really fun to do not so much to watch Mm -hmm. except for the killian yeah, Everybody in terms the of Killian. let's just say least favorite the Killian, the Killian like, bar none, the Killian. For those who aren't familiar, it's one of the more high level dances for no reason. Basically, you have one little corner of difficult turns, and the rest of it is just progressive. So you're just well, like left, right, it's left, right, left, and then it's into not the even turns. difficult turns. Well, it is yeah. difficult turn. Yeah. It is one Choctaw and a bunch of quick steps. Yeah, and that's the entire dance. Yeah. So. That's the worst one. Yeah. <laughs> but in terms of ones to skate, some of the best ones are definitely the Paso Doble and the Starlight Waltz. I would add to that as well. I've Silver always Samba. loved the Silver Samba. I, that's the one where you yell at people to get out of the yeah. way because you're going to run them over because you're going so fast. Like that time you almost took out a kid with Scott doing it? Oh, yes. At Mariposa? At multiple times. That <laughs> The Silver Samba is maybe the fastest pattern yeah. dance that there is. And it's just exciting. I just love the ones that you're just yeah. speeding down the ice. And that's another one that I actually really enjoy watching mm-hmm. because it is, it's fast and it's also one of the more intricate ones. Yeah. Inter- There's lots of leg kicks and yeah. things that make it fun. It's it's a lot of fun to watch. And also slip steps. Slip steps. Slip steps are great. Yep. The only time you should ever be on a straight line in ice dance. Yep. Um, in terms of other fun, I will say the fin step is probably yes. one of my favorites. It's a lot of fun to watch. Um, that is actually one that I've never attempted doing personally. So yeah. how fun a- it is to skate, I don't know. It is one I'd love to learn. You need a partner to do it yeah. and not a whole lot of people know it. Yes. Um, another one, same vein, the quick step is a lot of fun to mm-hmm. watch. Um, it's a really hard one to do, but it is fun to do as well. Yeah, because it's another fast yeah. one. Yeah, the the fast ones and particularly the fast upbeat ones, mm-hmm. as opposed to the faster tangos, are probably the most fun to watch. Yeah. In terms of slower ones, those ones for me, both to skate and to watch, they don't grab me quite yeah. as much. One that I do really love that hasn't really been done is the Viennese waltz. Yes. I would love to see that as a required pattern sometime. But that one's hard, too. It is. That's, that's probably why I like it. <laughs> yeah. Like the cha-cha. Yep. It's fun to watch the cha-cha because there are 800,000 steps in there. Yeah. Um, yeah. So those are some... You have clearly been able to tell which patterns we like. We like mm-hmm. the fun ones. The fast Be- ones. <laughs> because they're fun and they're fast and there's lots going on. And they're the most likely that you're going to wipe out. Yeah. Which, you know, we got to throw that excitement. into ice dance. Yeah. An element of danger never hurts. <laughs> yep. So do you have any least favorite, Patrick, in terms of what you've watched? Oh my god. Um, most of them. <laughs> um, so, like I said at the beginning, I am newer to ice dance um, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. in general. So I haven't even like watched all the patterns. And I also... Full disclosure, don't tend to watch juniors. Um, Mm -hmm. But I feel like the Spanish rhythms in general, which sounds really terrible to generalize them all in the same category, (laughs) but like they... Well, I mean, the ISU does. Yeah, it's fine. Great that I'm just using ISU language. Don't (laughs) at me. Um, I feel they're just harder. The thing that I think of like from an audience perspective is like, can I sit and watch like 20 of these 
in a row? And the answer is usually Mm -hmm. no for most of them. And I feel like here's the thing. I really uh, came around to the Yankee Polka when it started. When we started that season, mm-hmm. I was like, this is dumb. I can't believe we're doing this. <laughs> this is so embarrassing. And by the end of the season and having watched many other seasons around it in both directions now, I'm like, the Yankee Polka is where it's at. I think I tend to like yeah. more fun things as well. I think that's mm-hmm. just where I'm at as a skating fan in general these days is I'm leaning more. I feel like for a long time, I was leaning more towards serious programs in general and liking those more Mm -hmm. and lately both in ice dance and generally like more fun programs have been where it's at for me so anything that's fast and moves quickly and is like maybe a little silly at the same time i'm game with (laughs) don't make me watch another tango romantica ever again because (laughs) my god was this season rough yeah yeah it was rough well at least like we said the the season's rhythm dance it's is going to be really hard to make it not fun so yeah you have no choice yeah you're gonna have to have some fun with this yeah i'm excited like it or not (laughs) yeah it's gonna be crazy and hopefully fun and exciting but yeah the fin step is one of my favorite patterns since the first time i was really paying attention enough to like recognize how great the fin step was Mm -hmm. which was four years ago because we didn't really do it a ton before then. Well, I think it was, I'm pretty sure it was Four Continents 2009 was the first time it was ever competed. And I remember watching that competition going, ooh, I want to do that (laughs) one. And that's for me, you know, again, that's somebody who does ice dance. Yeah, exactly. Watching and going, ooh, I want to learn that pattern. Yes. The the fin step is a lot of fun, and I'm very glad that they picked it, and that Mm -hmm. they gave us a pattern at all. Yep. Happy about that. (laughs) Um, So... We talked a little bit about assessing skating skills already. Mm-hmm. That was the other question from skating fan XOXO. I hope we answered that thoroughly enough. <laughs> the answer is all ice dancers have good skating skills. Yeah. Um, let's see. I think we'll leave the Papa Duck and Caesar. We had a few people asking about yes. them. We'll address that at the same time. We will get that all at once. Um, uh. And we talked about how pattern dances were chosen, uh, which th- we didn't mention who that came from. Ellie, I'm going to butcher this. Rusu? Rusu? Maybe. At Rusu99 on Twitter. Sorry, I definitely butchered that. I, d- I don't know. <laughs> I tried my best. Um, and then we have one last question. Uh, where does the way a skate feels to a judge fit into the component scores? Um, Everywhere. D- that <laughs> stance is subjective, yeah. like all of figure skating. And that came from Blue f- at Blue for Words on Twitter. Yeah. That's it's kind of hard to answer, but honestly, like we said, so in ice dance, you have much more likelihood of having perfect skates than any yes. other discipline. So let's say, let's just an imaginary scenario: the top five teams, whoever they are, at the World Championships, skate perfectly, all, all level of, fours, yep. no issues of any kind. How do you make a decision between them? Yeah, it comes down to personal preference. That it, that is what it is. It comes down to. How much do I like the way this team skates? How much do I like this program? And how much do I think they exemplified every single bullet point on the list for GOE and PCS? Yeah. And I know that that's, that is kind of what makes ice dance hard to judge. You know, you talk about the singles, you can talk about this person under rotated that, or they missed a level on a spin, or they only had this base value. But in ice dance, there is such a thing as a perfect score. Yep. And there is, you know, everybody is aiming for the exact same base value, the exact same elements. And if everybody skates cleanly and perfectly, the only way that you can differentiate is preference. Yeah. I prefer X dance over Y dance. Mm -hmm. If I'm Patrick, I love fun, upbeat programs. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to pick the perfect fun, upbeat program yep. over the perfect, more serious program. Mm-hmm. That's that's where you make that differentiation. That shouldn't, at the same time, have more impact than the quality of the skating, which we're seeing no. a little bit of right now with the GOE differentiation. Yeah, and I think that's where the frustration comes yeah. in, is less about um, when teams are skating perfectly but when teams aren't and then how can you justify putting you know somebody who didn't skate quite as well over somebody who did skate perfectly yeah and that's 
that gets into more weird territory of again it it's still subjective and i'm sure there's some you know inherent biases coming in just in terms yeah. of things like I know that, you know, say Papa Duck and Caesar are world champions, so maybe I'm more inclined to give them the benefit of the doubt, things like that. Yeah, I'm more willing to give them the benefit of the doubt that, no, she didn't really come to a full stop, or he didn't come to a full stop in the middle of that twizzle, so I'm going to give them the level. Mm -hmm. And that, or as a judge, you're maybe not even looking at the level before giving them the GOE point. Which happens a lot. Which happens all the time in Ice Dance and it's infuriating because (laughs) you should not be giving a level one anything a plus five. Agreed. But that's... They're not trying for a level one. Well, and that's why I would love to see them reassess some of the rules and base values, but that's... That has to wait till the next ISU Congress, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, the fact that Put you can get like, positive GOE on a level 3 element and outscore someone who mm-hmm. has level 4 elements yep. is insane. It doesn't make sense. Honestly, Agreed. I can live with the level 3 beating out the level 4. Mm-hmm. It's the 1s and Bs that are beating out yeah. 2s, 3s, and 4s. Yeah. That's where I get angry. <laughs> yeah. Because at least a level 3, it's like, no, nah, you did most of what you were trying for. Mm-hmm. You almost got it. And you did it i guess really well somehow right but yeah. even though like, you didn't actually there's just get this it weird like almost like there's this weird contradiction in goe with like the pattern leveled elements in general and that like you did that level three tango romantica really well it's like did you though because you were trying to do a level four so like <laughs> did you actually yeah. do it really well and it's by just definition, weird... you messed it up. Yeah. Right. So, like, you, there yeah. was something wrong, but, like, and I understand, like, the, those are assessed separately, but it's just this weird, the more you think about it, the less sense it makes. Mm-hmm. And it's just, like, this yep. really hard contradiction as you're looking at, especially something like Ice Dance, I feel like, where it stands out the most. Yeah. That is one place where, I mean, most of the times the technical panel does their thing and the judges do their thing, but in Ice Dance, I really would love to see... Like they do in gymnastics, where they yeah. say, you are not allowed to give this over well, XGOE. Or even not just that, but even just for the judges to be able to see fairly quickly, because usually they're judging fairly quickly, this is the level that the technical panel yeah. assessed. And so if they see, oh, they, you know, let's say Hubble and Donahue on that stationary lift yep. at Four Continents, they really dropped a level. Oh, I guess I should look at that again to mm-hmm. see if it deserved a plus five, because obviously something went wrong. I think something like that, there needs to be sort of more communication between yeah. the technical panel yes. and the judging in Ice Dance. I think yeah, also that just is... in general, but in, in Ice Dance well, in yes. particular, but I'm with you guys on that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean, that's the same conversation we have about under rotations in mm-hmm. single skating, is, well, they under rotated it, but a judge gave them a plus three on it because yeah. the judge didn't see it. They thought, oh, it looked great to me. Yeah, at the very least, just to, you know, indicate to the judges, rewatch this thing. The technical yes. panel gave it a bad level, you know, just something of Flashing like Flashing lights. Yep. Hey, this is a B, and you gave it a positive GOE. Maybe look at this again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, that. that'll take a long time to implement, I'm sure, but I would love something like that. That would be the ideal situation. Mm-hmm. Okay. So almost three questions. We are almost we through questions. <laughs> the next two are ones that came to us through our email. So these are slightly longer questions <laughs> because they were not condensed into a single tweet. <laughs> um, so this question comes from Docs, and the question is about lifts, which is basically asking why are lifts limited to seven seconds? Is it just to differentiate from pairs, or is there a ballroom dance reason behind it? No, it's literally just to differentiate from pairs. Yeah, exactly. They wanted to not have too much overlap in the elements that happen in both pairs and dance. And so that is why, like, for example, you can't lift over the head and things like that. Well, you you kind of can now. Well, you can, but not, you know, arms fully fully extended extended over the head. You can't do a pair lift and dance. Yeah, it's just to provide differentiation so that they are different disciplines, basically. Yes. And the next part of that question was, uh, what goes into determining lift levels? I know from listening to Ted Barton, the number of positions can increase the level. However, I also noticed that lifts with a single difficult position, like Piper and Paul's curved lift in Vincent, or when Una Brown lifted Gage, thank you for that shout out to mm-hmm. our favorites, um, can also get a high level. <laughs> <laughs> they are the best. They're, they're my favorite. Um, how does that work? And do they specify exactly what a difficult position is, or is it subjective? On that last point, 
it's the ISU. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, on that one, to be fair, if, if you decide to go into the detailed technical rules yes. for lifts, they do have all the different examples of here's what a difficult position is. Um, here's the number of, you know, sort of what different things qualify as difficult to attain a level. Yes. So um, um, another good example for people who watched Ice Dance in 2014 um, you can compare rotational lifts from Virtue and Moyer and Davison White. They took completely different approaches to it, where Virtue and Moyer were changing positions, mm -hmm. and Davison White went for a difficult entry, a difficult position with her full split, which is still impressive, mm -hmm. and then a difficult exit. And they got the same level with two completely different approaches to that lift. Yeah, and basically the idea behind that is that both things are difficult. If you have, like for example, a full split in a lift, plus difficult entry and exit, those are difficult things, but it's also difficult to just keep, you know, changing position and have a whole bunch of different positions going on within the lift while, you know, staying in like a spread eagle or something, yes. for example. Um, and basically it's to allow teams to play around with what they're more comfortable with. Yeah, and so it is really hard to hold a challenging position, like for example, Piper and Paul's in Vincent, that curved lift, that balance point is mm -hmm. ridiculous. I still don't understand how they actually do that lift. Yeah. Um, where she's leaning completely over top of him. It's really hard to maintain that balance point for the entire time. And so that's difficult. Having the lady like whip around his shoulders and head and change positions Something three times. Something like chalk and baits do a lot of those yeah. lifts with really crazy changes of position. Those are also incredibly difficult. And so we, we're trying not to value one over the other. Yeah, exactly. And just allowing for variety in what you see as well, which is a great thing. Which is also what lets Una lift Gage, yep. which is my favorite. Mm -hmm. I love sibling teams where the girl lifts the guy. <laughs> The other one was the Cares. Yep. Sinead and John Care. My favorite, my first favorite sibling <laughs> team. Yep. Okay, and then we get into, so we've had a few people ask us about Papadakis and Caesarone. I guess they're controversial, I suppose. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> what are, wait, what are they asking? <laughs> so there are people who are asking all sorts of different things. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read an email we got a few weeks ago. I did mention a little while ago. We got an email. Sandy in Seattle, we are getting to your email that you sent us a while ago. This is it. Um, so Sandy writes to us as a former dancer who came to skating via the New York Times dance section article on Papadakis and Caesaron. I've continued to be confused by skating commentators saying that Papadakis and Caesaron dances are all the same. You two came the closest to making me understand the comment in your podcast about the world's ice dance event. Um, one of you said they do sweet very well and should can should try creating a, another ambiance. It finally made some sense, but it left me wondering how you responded to their 2017 free dance, which embodied conflict and anxiety. And the short dance that year uh, brought Lindy Hop to the ice. It Anyway, so I'm going to skip ahead so, a little bit. Yep. In the, Sandy talks about um, the way that they chose to interpret the Latin free dance or rhythm dance my short brain dance. is short <laughs> dance too many name changes um is it possible that what underlies figure skating aficionados response to papadoxus and caesaron is that they move more like dancers than like skaters did their rumba pop 2016 gala and swing dances uh seem the same the way that ballet dancers trying those genres might make them all look like ballet flipped around from this dancer's perspective Virtue and Wire are outstanding ice skaters, but what they do does not register as dance. It's ice skating. Is your response to Papa Dawkins and Caesar on the inverse of my response to Virtue and Moyer? Lots to unpack. That's a yes. super like it's... nuanced, very interesting mm -hmm. way to put it that I've never heard before. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, and actually, well, I, I'm not sure, Patrick, but do you have much background in dance outside of figure skating at all? Um, other than my sister doing dance while we grew up and so <laughs> seeing a lot of styles of dance uh, as I was growing up, I don't have any sort of like formal dance training background. Um, I think if I can take the layman's attempt at an explanation and then let mm -hmm. you guys handle mm -hmm. actual technical <laughs> things, I think mm -hmm. two things... <laughs> 
two things that I would do here. One is you have to pull out the short slash rhythm dance separately from the free dance, which Mm -hmm. is where you hear that criticism the most. And the reason you have to do that is the short slash rhythm. And I'm saying that because their name has, the name has changed Um, that the style for that dance, the pattern, as we've been talking about is a requirement. So there's much less Mm -hmm. flexibility there and everyone is sort of on like equal playing field footing. And so where you hear the criticism, I think around Papadakis and Cicerone, um, is mostly with their free dances and they, they tend to take with a very if I'm painting with the broadest brush possible they tend to take a similar approach in that their style is very lyrical um, and they don't tend to uh, their music selections really fit inside this like nice little box of what I would describe as their like comfort zone they don't do a lot of like yes they may have like anxiety and other things in their music but really they have this like lyrical style and approach to their free dance that as someone who has been watching them the entire time they've been senior seems to sort of hit a similar note year over year yes the music is different yes they are incredibly good skaters i don't think anyone would ever deny that i think the lack of variance when you're watching every year and when you're watching competition over competition is what's sort of grading on some people um, mm-hmm. that's sort of where I land with that. I'm not saying it's a hundred percent valid and I'm saying that you can pull out more nuances <laughs> in their free dances and their definite differences. But in general, they have this sort of like softer lyrical approach that also you might say is indicative of Marie France's camp in general these days mm-hmm. and where ice dance is heading in general. And I think some of it's coming from maybe longer term ice dance fans who are used to seeing like more drama and angst in ice dance mm-hmm. or people who just are starting more casual fans maybe like myself who are starting to get bored with saying seeing that same lyrical approach to the free dance over and over from lots of different teams including Papadakis and Cicerone that was a lot yeah Yeah, I think that's well I think that's basically kind of where we would go with it as well is uh, again obviously they are amazing skaters and they can bring out real emotion when they're skating and it, again, talking about the free dances, because the short dance rhythm dance is a different thing, but yeah. in the free dance, they do generally go with a more lyrical, contemporary style, where especially if you contrast them with somebody like Virtue and Moyer, their main selling point to me has always been their versatility. They are yes. really chameleons and can skate to any type of music. And for me personally, a lot of my frustration with Papadakis and Cicerón actually comes from the quality that we see in their shorter rhythm dance. Mm-hmm. In that, yes, you can do a fun program like the program that they're... Uh, like the Lindy Hop. The Lindy Hop mm-hmm. or their Samba that took a little while to grow on me, but I mm-hmm. eventually really liked. Like, you can do those. So why are you forcing yourself into this one contemporary ballet box Mm -hmm. you don't need to do that and part of that is yes as ice dance fans we're used to diversity yeah because it's forced on them they have no choice (laughs) as opposed to someone like a user ohanyu could do the same type of program every year and people would feel differently than they do about papadakis and Cicerone in large part because the technical content looks so different. Mm-hmm. And I, that's not to say that, you know, Papadakis and Cicerone's programs aren't enjoyable. Of no, course they no, are. They're it's incredibly just the talented. Frust- yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, talking about skating skills, they have some of the best even of the ice dancers. But I think some of the frustration just comes in seeing them year after year, not really challenging themselves. Yeah. Especially when you see a team that's that good and you know you could challenge yourself and do something really interesting. And not seeing that happen can lead to a little bit of frustration sometimes. And knowing that right now they don't really have any competition. Mm-hmm. Yep. There isn't anybody nipping at their heels, so there's no reason to not experiment right now. Mm-hmm. There's nothing for, all for we them know, to lose. I think is the thing is like when you are the undisputed best skater in your discipline and no one can compete with you when you're at your best. So they are the perfect example of that right now. Different when Virtue and Moyer were coming back and I can understand why they would Mm -hmm. want to like stay in their safe space. But right now there is no team internationally that can touch them. They are untouchable unless they make mistakes. And so part of the frustration I think is 
you are untouchable you have nothing to lose which gives you the freedom and power to take as many risks as you want and when you see them do Mm -hmm. this lyrical contemporary style season over season you're sort of like what could we be see they could be innovating in like a really cool interesting way that pushes the field which i understand also maybe isn't the fairest thing to expect of a team right like you're out you're an athlete Mm -hmm. you're there you're there to win but also like if you're gonna win as long as you don't mess up which they don't very often why not take some risk why not Mm -hmm. do something why not do something to benefit the sport as a whole rather than just focusing on like we will be olympic champions at the next olympics and in the meantime (laughs) we're not going to take any risks and i think the other thing is you run into although they haven't really hit this yet um you run into the judges also getting bored with sort of the you doing the same thing over and Mm -hmm. over they have not come anywhere close to that um uh, but like i think the but the come next Olympics, we might reach that. Right. Like yeah. it might benefit them to over the next couple seasons to try something new and different and outside the outside their box. It could be new for them and still be <laughs> very much inside the ice dance box. Um, but and then for the next Olympics, go back to that time old strategy yeah. that has yeah. worked so well for them, which is that lyrical <laughs> contemporary. Make style. us miss it. Exactly. Make us miss, yep. you know, like their their Mozart program, yeah. that free dance, which I love so much, and it again they are I I fully believe that they are capable of, and and a lot of it comes down to music too. Just mm-hmm. picking a piece of music that has a different feel, even if again they bring out different emotions in their skating, and a lot of times they do have you know new lifts and new choreographic movements. They do pull pull those things in every year they have new things but if the overall sort of style of dance is the same it gets to feel a little you know staid and boring as opposed to you know again if you look at virtue and moyer's programs even in their free dances just how different they all are muller to carmen Mm -hmm. well and and everything in between and to funny face yeah and to umbrellas of cherbourg and to and, Moulin Rouge. And then you throw in their short or rhythm dances. And which, the original dances as well. And their original dances, which even though they were prescribed, they were constantly pushing boundaries even within the prescription that they were given. Mm-hmm. Like that Prince program. Mm-hmm. That one was one of my favorites. Yeah, it was fantastic, but it wasn't what we were expecting that season. Yeah. And so I would love to see Papa Doc and Caesar on try something slightly different. Even if they went in a direction like Rite of Spring which I, still yeah. fits oh, that kind of so within their box. This my, is my... Yeah, my dream for them is like total modern dance. Either yes. that or like the soundtrack to the movie Pina. Yes. I think that as well would be fantastic. Pina, we haven't right heard that Spring, much recently. Those... We, it used to be around a lot more and people mm-hmm. are using it yeah. these yeah. days. True contemporary ballet, mm-hmm. that style, I think would be a really interesting direction for them. Especially since it's, you know, you're still, you're just step, stepping barely outside the box. It's tangentially it's exactly. your box. Right. Yeah. It's your, your bigger box. Yep. You're not going completely prince. It's like, like the Russian you don't nesting need to go dolls, that far. right? You stepped out of the littlest one yeah. into the next one around yeah. it. Yes, exactly. And I think that that would suit them so well, but mm-hmm. they're not pushing out into that next level of what they could be doing. And I really hope that this season is that season. Yeah. I think that, you know, obviously we got multiple people asking us basically this question. Yeah. And so it is something that people are thinking about. And so hopefully they can sort of read the room and especially yeah. after winning convincingly this year to say, okay, it's time to step outside our box even if it's just a little bit time to try something a little different it doesn't have to be completely different just mm-hmm. a little bit yep please i need <laughs> it all right yeah. and i think that's all our questions i think we've gone through all Everything. the new requirements i'm sure there will be <laughs> new questions from this episode we might have to do a follow-up at some point <laughs> but the other the other thing listeners can do, if you have questions after this, tweet them to us. Mm-hmm. We will try and answer. Yes, and we will. Th- that's how, by the way, that's out. how this happened, is me just tweeting out, like, <laughs> yes. I don't understand ice dance. And you guys were like, great, let's well, help you. And then this, be- and I thought you were joking at first, and now it's become a thing, which has been really great. Um, so I'm just saying, ask questions. Not me. Don't ask me ice yeah. dance questions. If you want, like, 
if you want like just general impressions often expressed in a snarky way then ask me all your ice dance questions but don't ask me anything technical because i'll just be like i don't know <laughs> well i so is this helpful to you at least this was I really helpful was. and yes. really interesting <laughs> i think also forcing i like don't read through the isu documents because normally because they're like tedious um and there are mm-hmm. often people yeah. around who will do that instead i usually wait for like uh jackie wong's post every year that's like here are all the rule yeah. changes and yeah. i'm like great jackie did all my work for me um same thing with grand prix <laughs> final math i'm like he'll just do it it'll be fine um <laughs> but this was really helpful i think forcing me to read through the documents and like really think about things a really pointed out to me like where i do understand things and where i just have like weird giant gaps in my knowledge like what are loops so thank <laughs> you for answering that um and it was really fun to talk about the discipline that i like watch the least still (laughs) and like maybe i'll watch more now and i am genuinely excited for the fin step so um that should be fun well that's good and i think that's our main thing is to try and lift the veil a little bit and just get people you know understanding and interested in ice dance because ice dance is so much fun guys Mm -hmm. you don't know how much fun ice dance (laughs) can be if you haven't been watching on a year when it's been a fun pattern yep and as excited as I am for the fin step, I am very excited for the tea time foxtrot. Mm-hmm. I'm really excited and for actually, the another visual. Thing I... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yep. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Yeah. The visual of the Oh, oh yeah. The, the balancing tea the teacups. I feel like any juniors I watch, I'm going to be like, is a teacup balancing on the lady's head right now? I... Random thought I just had, but I would love to see somebody do like a costume with a headband with a little teacup on top oh and just that would be really right funny that would be, that would be really funny <laughs> we have good ideas i know that there are ice dancers listening we have good ideas feel free to steal them steal all of the ideas you want yep. um yes the one last thing i was going to say that was very interesting usually when they release these documents of the new requirements for the next upcoming year, there's a little paragraph at the end that says, and the next season after that, this is what the pattern's going to be. It was not in nope. this document. Mm-hmm. Maybe they've learned from our frustration <laughs> last year when they didn't name a pattern that they're going to be reticent. I do have a prediction, though. Yes. And who knows if this is going to actually happen. But Carol Lane on Twitter has mentioned that next season the junior pattern that's going to be required is the maple leaf march which was piper and paul's yes. uh, pattern which is now an official ice dance that's a great and name, we're trying by the to way. yep yeah well and it made me think okay so if the juniors are going to be doing that they usually try and fit it thematically with the seniors yep. so what would fit with the seniors another little dance with a north american name the yankee polka perhaps? <laughs> my dreams all my dreams coming true <laughs> That that's my prediction. Who knows whether it's going to come true? But I would not be surprised if that's you heard what it here first, next folks. season. <laughs> Based on what Carol Lane has said, it sounds like that might be the direction they're headed in. And I would love to have the Yankee polka yep. again. Well, and just in terms of what would match thematically, like you could do a waltz or something. Eh. But, but then they would probably just have the junior and the senior doing yeah. waltz. So right. I. Bold prediction, Yankee Polka for the yep. year after next. Oh, I that would be so. two fun <laughs> patterns two years in a row. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> that would be so great. That is the hope. Let's do it. That's, that's my dream. <laughs> Come on, ISU. Let us make your decisions for you in Ice Dance. <laughs> we would make good choices, I promise. And, well, this has gone much longer I than say, just realizing. If you're wow, still that was listening, over two you are a here. hero. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very long yeah. episode. Feel free to cut out all of my nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be honest, Patrick. We probably won't. That's fine. Yeah. I stand by everything I, I said. I think it's a good. Well, that's the thing. You, we would had hoped that you would make things more fun and lighthearted. And yes, I think and you, you did. Succeeded. I try. Yeah. Yes. So I tried to keep the snark <laughs> to a minimum as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay. before we sign off, uh, where can people find you if they're interested in hearing more of you online? Um, if you're interested in the slightly snarkier version of me, uh, you can follow <laughs> me on Twitter at team underscore PDD. Those are my initials. Um, and then over on YouTube, I have a dumb little channel called Patrick Commentate Skating, <laughs> where I do basically the opposite of what happened here, which was like very thoughtful analysis. <laughs> and I just sort of like scream my feelings about skaters for like four five minutes at a time so if that appeals to you go check it out it is very silly um i'm not an expert Mm -hmm. it is me 
having a lot of feelings and sharing my love for some skaters and my distaste for some other things. So, <laughs> well, the, we love we all love skating because it brings out the feelings. Yes. So yeah, you know, we need somebody to vocalize that for everybody. Exactly. <laughs> we if everybody was rational, this would be less fun. Exactly. True. All right, so let's wrap this up for now. Yeah. Uh, thank you all for listening, and please let us know your thoughts about this week in figure skating at flutzescast at gmail.com. You can also follow us at flutzescast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for even more skating content. Check out our merch store on redbubble.com, search for flutzescast, and if you like what we do, consider leaving us a review wherever you're listening. We'll be back shortly with more off season stuff, but until then, keep a watchful eye out for those flutzes and waxels skating fans. Oh,